This episode of Comedy Bang Bang is brought to you by Squarespace. Big plans for the new year? Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a unique website. Showcase your work, blog, or publish content, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks of the mouse, my dear boy. You can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products using beautiful templates created by world-class designers, and there is nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code BANGBANG to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. My jingle horse refused to pick up its feet, so everyone I know is getting jingle glue for Christmas this year. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Thanks to Eponymous Potty Mouse for that catchphrase submission. Haven't heard from Eponymous Pony Mouse. I wonder if it's Ponymous. What? <laughs> Pony Mouse. Actually, I think it's Pony Mouse. What are you talking about? Uh, all right. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, I'll tell you who that is in a second. Uh, they know. <laughs> yeah, I think they may. <laughs> Uh, such a unique voice. But as far as my voice, I'm Scott Ackerman. I'm the host of Comedy Bang Bang. Well, welcome to the show for another uh, episode here. We are definitely in the throes of Decky Doggy, and uh, that is happening. And uh, <laughs> we're somewhere in uh, like halfway through at this point of Decky Doggy. And coming up on the show, we have a, a very – look, this is the show where we talk to interesting people. That's uh, our catchphrase. There, it's not, Sorry, it's not our catchphrase. Uh, it's our tagline. Oh, boy, I almost said it was our catchphrase. We haven't thought of one of those. Ever since the What's Up Hot Dog days, we've been searching in vain for a, for another great one. Have still not found one. What are you talking about? Okay, we'll get to you in a second. Ugh. Maybe this is your first time listening to the show. Uh, uh, we take re, uh, re, uh, reader or listener uh, submissions for <laughs> catchphrases. It's the first time I'm doing the show, apparently. Um, we have a wonderful show coming up. This is the show where we talk to interesting people, and that catchphrase, or tagline rather, has oh swept the nation. And this show really encapsulates that tagline perfectly because we have a guest who's never been on the show before. I have so many questions. He has a body of work. I know, I, you, I had you at, he has a body. Uh, he is corporeal. Uh, <laughs> He has a body of work that uh, you go on one of these websites that that uh, lists every single thing he's ever been. You'll you'll get yourself too tired to even read. You'll have to take a nap in the middle of the day, or if you're reading it at night, you'll just go to sleep for eight or nine hours. It's so long. He's got so much. So much to talk about. Uh, he has a new film, Downsizing, which comes out uh, December twenty second. In theaters, Alexander Payne's new film. Uh, I've seen it uh, last night. A fantastic I, film. Yes. I thought you were talking about me until you started talking about this movie. Why would I be talking about you with a list of accomplishments and credits? Well, I'm very accomplished. But something that like people talk about on the internet, other than just your poor reviews. I just, mm, why'd you have to bring that? You out? brought them once to the show. Well, that was to settle a score with someone. I wanted to shame him for re writing such a terrible review. By basically, all you did was shame yourself. But we got a full uh, accounting of one of your horrible performances. I am unashamed. <laughs> <laughs> so you take his side. <laughs> well, yeah. if I read it you in the paper, it probably happened. Oh, sure. <laughs> Wait, are you a conspiracy theorist? Well, I'm just saying not everything in the newspaper is true. All right. We'll get to you in a second, BCB. Mm. Uh, but Neil Patrick Harris is coming up on the show. Uh, I understand he's running a little late in traffic. From Jurassic uh, Park 1 and 3? <laughs> No, uh, I believe you're thinking of Sam Neill. Oh, yeah. Are you disappointed? Neil Patrick Harris. He's in uh, How I Met Your Mother and, and Doogie Howser and sure. uh, the musical Rent. I really like Sam Neill. What do you like about Sam Neill? Well, he's a good actor. Well, yeah, but so is Neil Patrick Harris. Okay, sorry. There's more than one good actor in the world. Well, of course. Otherwise, I'm the, not allowed to have a favorite. Otherwise, the Academy Awards would be so boring. It would just be, and the winner is Sam Neill again. Oh, that sounds like heaven. <laughs> what if you went to heaven and every year <laughs> it the was Academy just Sam Neill getting an Oscar over and over <laughs> yeah. again? 
I don't know. I guess I, I wouldn't mind it, I guess. <laughs> I think it would get boring, wouldn't it? Well, regular heaven gets boring. Yeah, I guess so. Have you uh, d- have you ever had a near death experience where you visited one of these places? Well, I mean, I've had near death experiences. Sure, and I've seen things that I wish I hadn't seen. Really, like like what? Well, one time, I remember I got overcome with soup fumes. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I need to actually introduce you so people know what you're talking about when you say soup fumes. All right. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris is coming up on the show in our next segment, uh, but uh, let's get to our first guest. Certainly not our guest of honor, but our first guest. What? <laughs> Why make that you distinction? Gotta make that distinction. He is a children's entertainer. That's right. He's been on the show several times previous yeah. to this. He, uh, may I describe your actor? Do you want to do it? Yeah, I'll save it for you. Uh, but he's a children's entertainer, and he goes by the stage name, I believe. That's because, correct. Uh, of Big Chunky Bubbles. Welcome. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm sure I have quite a fan base by now, having appeared on this show so many times. Like three times, maybe. Yeah, but I'm sure people are relieved when I show up. They're like, oh, finally, it's entertaining. <laughs> so Big Chunky Bubbles, describe your act before we get to the soup fumes. Oh, it's simple. I am a children's entertainer, and I make bubbles out of soups and stews. Hence the name Big Chunky Bubbles. Have we talked about what is easier, a soup or a stew? We haven't. Probably a soup, I would think. That's right. Good instinct. What about a puree? Puree is much harder to make bubbles out of. Really? I would think the uh, elasticity of it would would be uh, assist. Uh, the assist- elasticity of it? Uh, you know, I mean, it doesn't have a lot of weight. Uh, like a stew definitely has chunks, but your name is Big Chunky a Bubbles. A puree has more weight than a soup. It does. Yeah. It has less cream, usually. Than a soup? Yeah. Not every soup has cream. Okay, but a puree is purely just taking the actual uh, ingredients and and pureeing them down. That's right. right. So they have a thicker consistency. Okay, all right. But I guess the soup has more water in it. Is that what? Yeah. All right. Okay. I don't. I'm not a chef. Well, then maybe you should keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, if I did that, we would have no show. Oh, what a dream! I changed my idea of heaven. I don't know why I have you on the show. I don't either, <laughs> to be honest. But look, we're going to talk to you. You you are a you are a children's entertainer who uses soups and stews to make big chunky bubbles. Now you've you've seen a a person making soap bubbles. You make soup bubbles. Boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, soap bubbles make themselves. Me telling people about that, or the people actually doing yeah, it. A bit of both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you decide to take it up, you wanted to kick it up a notch. Yeah, bam. (laughs) I decided that it would be more interesting to make big, chunky bubbles (laughs) rather than boring old soap bubbles. Can I ask, did you come up with the stage name first and then the idea to make soap or soup bubbles? They were almost simultaneous. Really? Yeah. I made the bubble first and I said, oh, look at that big, chunky bubble. (laughs) And then almost like a photo finish. And then I looked, I could see myself in the bubble. Whoa. And so I said, I'm looking at me. I'm big, chunky bubbles. Wow. Yeah. This is like the origin story. I guess. This, uh, this is like uh, when Peter Parker, you know, decides that- The with, spectacular Spider-Man? Yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. Great and great. So now you you are a children's entertainer. We've talked extensively on this program yeah. about uh, oh, your mishaps. No, um, well, okay, but more of your mishaps where uh, hot scalding soup gets spattered uh, above I don't know why. Uh, the heads to of bring children. Bring that up all the time. Yeah, sometimes hot scalding soup has, you know, spilled on people. Sure, and uh, perhaps scarred children for life. <laughs> Sort of like a a powder situation? I don't know that we've ever said that any children were scarred for life okay. because of my Is that routine. S- simply because you haven't checked up on these children? I don't... This is very... This is what you do every time. I'm merely interested in your life. I want to hear all the details. Well, if you're it. really interested in my life, you'd ask me what I'm what I'm working on lately. Okay, I will do that, but uh, I do want to get to the soup fumes. That you were talking about earlier. That's right. Okay, so now you 
you spend all night, anytime you have a performance, I would imagine you spend all night uh, toil, toil, uh, and trouble mixing around your soups. Toil, the, toil, and trouble. What is the, what am I trying to think Bubble, of? bubble, toil, and trouble. Right. How does your garden grow? <laughs> <laughs> with snips and snails and tuck, tuck puppy dog tails. Now let's get on with the show. Right. Okay. That's what so I say every night. That's what you say as you're mixing your soup. Yeah. Okay. And so then uh, the following day, you then premiere these soups at your performance. I don't premiere the soups. It's the bubbles that are the star of the show. So the soups, no one cares. You don't do a big presentation of the soups? Well, I tell people what the soup is so they have some context for how amazing the bubbles are. Okay, but there's no presentation like, and now get ready for the soups. And then uh, an assistant brings them out and you say, look at this one. I made it last night. I think that that would lead people to believe they're going to eat some soup, which yeah. they're not going to do. You don't allow anyone to eat the soup. Well, no, because sometimes I have to add a, 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 a fixative to it to help make the bubbles. Now, I would think that people would be very excited to just have soup. Like you could have a, a really good business just making these soups, which by all accounts are delicious, and then just passing them out. What what account? What I, I would imagine that are they not delicious soups? No, <laughs> they're not. No, they don't have to be good. They're not for people to eat. Wait, wait so you don't use the finest of ingredients? I use the most necessary of ingredients. Just whatever the bare minimum to make it soup. Yes, exactly. Okay, so these are disgusting tasting soups. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think if something is a soup, it should, at bare minimum, at least taste like soup and presentable. Okay, all right, genius. Let me let me run this concept by you. All right. Sometimes when they want to photograph ice cream, it's really mashed potatoes because okay. the ice cream melts. doesn't fo- it melts. It doesn't photograph the same way. Sure. So they'll photograph mashed potatoes standing in for ice cream. So, but by your analogy. You're saying that if you were to say, hi, I make soup bubbles, and then they were just soap bubbles, that would be fine because it looks better. And you're just lying to They're someone. two different media. Sure, but, but but mashed potatoes and ice cream are two different foods. My point is, if My you were trying is, to eat this ice cream and you got a mouthful of mashed potatoes, you'd say, this is not good ice cream. That's my point, is it's not even ice cream. You need to be serving soup. I'm not serving anything. <laughs> what? I, you're very frustrating, and I feel like you're you're deliberately misunderstanding the concept. I'm not misunderstanding at all. I'm saying if you have if you if you have just some disgusting toxic fluid. That's not soup. It's got to taste like soup. It's got to taste good. It does taste like soup. It doesn't taste like good soup. So t- would someone spit it out if they were, if it was in their mouth? They or should. They- <laughs> then it's not soup. <laughs> it is soup. It's just some concoction you're making. You're saying there's no there's no such thing as bad soup? There's there's poor soup where you're like, uh, this isn't my favorite soup. But if there's something wrong with the soup where you're like, Ugh, this is this they they fucked this soup up, you'd send it back to the kitchen. Yeah, if you're at a restaurant eating soup. But it's got, in order to be called soup, it's got to not be fucked up soup. What is this weird rule you're making? I, I'm saying you should, inst- instead of going out there and saying, hey, kids, I'm going to be making bubbles out of soup, you should say, I made this batch of, of liquid. Have you ever, uh, I, I think I already know the answer to this question, but have you ever sent food back in a restaurant? <laughs> Why would you? No, I sit there and I, I take it because I feel bad for the, the people in the service industry. Oh, is that so? <laughs> but so has any meal ever been less than good? Uh, but not disgusting. If something's disgusting and you go, oh, I wow. never said it was disgusting. Yeah. I just said it wasn't that good. Yes, you kind of did. Well... It depends on the individual. Everyone's everyone's palate is different. Ninety nine point nine percent of people find that your soup disgusting. They don't. They wouldn't find it good. Is all I'm saying. Okay, I don't know that it's soup then. Well, that, okay. This is my question. If you have a bad meal, would you go into the kitchen and say this hamburger? You can't call it a hamburger anymore. If if I ordered a hamburger. And instead, it was just like, uh, you know, a, a cow patty on a bun. I would say, you didn't make me a hamburger. You, you, you took some cow shit and you put it on a bun. Well, that's not what. Not to liken your culinary 
I creations to cow shit. I don't know why. I would come to this place at my own expense for free. How much is it costing you to get here? It costs me a lot of money. How much? I have to take several cabs. <laughs> why not just take one? Because some of the... <laughs> No one cab will Is take someone me. Someone following you? No one cab will take me the whole distance. Okay. Well, look. All I'm saying. <laughs> Hey, is this because you're broke and you use terrible ingredients, or is it because you don't have the know-how to make good tasting soup, or is it you, you just don't care? I okay. I feel like from the gate, I explain the concept. The soup doesn't have to be good because no one's going to eat it. It just has to be soup, so I can make soup bubbles. But it has to be edible. That's my point. It's edible, but edible things aren't always good. You could eat a crumpled up piece of paper. <laughs> that's bon what appetit. That's what it tastes like. You're contradicting yourself all the time. It does. It's just not that good is all I'm all saying. Right, all right, let's move on. I don't spend a lot of time making it delicious. But you spend a lot of time on it. You're chanting over and over. <laughs> that's right. That's more of a... A stage hyping ritual. yourself up yeah, for, hyping myself for up. the performance. Yeah, All right, let's yeah. move on. I, uh, I I do feel I'm right about this, but... Well, you're not. <laughs> let's move on. Everyone's so, entitled to their feelings, I guess. So soup fumes got the best of you. So I was overcome by soup fumes, and I feel like I went to a place briefly, or I was hovering over a place. Mm, the, uh, over your own body or over a different place? I don't consider my body a place, so... <laughs> but you were in a place, I presume. Well, you got me there. Your house? Yeah, I started in my house, overcome by soup fumes. Sure. So you were hovering above your house? I was hovering above a place that I'd never been to before. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now you're interested. <laughs> I certainly am. All right, you've hooked me. And now reel was, me in. It was a cold void. Mm. Filled with chairs. Okay. Like a uh, a waiting room type situation? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And there were people sitting there, and they looked awful bored. Okay. All right. Who? What do the people look like? Well, uh, one guy was kind of tall. He had kind of blonde hair, and he was. <laughs> I remember in front of these. Wait a minute. Are you just? Were you hovering? Chairs, there were microphones. You were and, hovering above the Ace, <laughs> the theater, of the Ace Hotel last night for the PCAST blast. <laughs> hmm. I remember that there weren't chairs so much as stools. <laughs> okay. And uh, everyone was holding microphones, and I remember there was, like, this whole huge crowd of people who were just yawning and falling asleep. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> okay, so... Of course, I've never been overcome by soup fumes. I'm just <laughs> making soup. And you're not even making soup. I'm... These whoa. would be fumes of some something else. It's soup. Just because all it's right. not good doesn't mean it's not soup. I'm following a recipe. W whose recipe are you following? Oh... This was a recipe handed down to me by my family. It's been really? in my family for generations. Really? How many generations do you know? Probably seven. Oh, my gosh. And this is soup from the old country? <laughs> what is your... From here. They, your family's been here with one of the original... Uh, That's right, from seven. the Mayflower. Really? Yeah. Any of your family burned at the stake for being witches? A few. Wow. Do you, do you think they that, weren't, by the way. Right. Do you think if you had done uh, your art form back then that you would be considered a warlock? Well, I think bubbles are pretty old. Yeah, I guess so. I think they've been around for hundreds of years. I guess people would probably just be more annoyed that you're popping hot, scalding bubbles. Oh, uh, of course. Maybe burn you at the stake of for that. Of course, in your scenario, they're annoyed and they're not delighted. <laughs> How do you know these primitive people wouldn't have been thrilled to see me make soap, soup bubbles? I guess now you're confused. Yeah, because of you. <laughs> Look, big chunky bubbles. Yeah. What are you doing here today? Well, it's the holiday season. It certainly is. A happy holidays to you, or may I say, Merry Christmas. You can say whatever you want. I don't care. Wait, which do you celebrate? I don't celebrate anything. Really? No. You're it's just another day to me. Well, you know, when you don't have anyone to spend the holidays with, it can it can sometimes feel that well, way. Well, I do. I have three kids. Oh, right. I forgot about them. Thanks. <laughs> what are their names again? Robbie, Bobby, and Tag. <laughs> right. Where do they live again? Do they live uh, near you? <laughs> 
Yeah, they live near me. I don't remember where you live, quite honestly. Well, I, and you never will. <laughs> but yes, my boys live with me. They live with you. Yeah. Okay. okay. And so I spend Christmas with them. It's I've been trying to talk them out of it, but they mm-hmm. just keep insisting that they want to celebrate it. They want presents. I know I personally don't celebrate it. It's hard when you, you young children are fascinated by Christmas. The uh, the corporations and the advertising community yeah. they really hype them up. Exactly. And, it's right. terrible. Mm-hmm. And so I disabuse them of the idea of a Santa Claus. Okay. At how early of an age? From, I'm going to say, in utero. <laughs> you know how some people play classical music for their baby before it's born? <laughs> right, sure. I was t- whispering to my wife's womb, there's no such thing as Santa Claus. You're whispering in your wife's womb? To, I said to. <laughs> What? Why do you do this? I don't know. You man. take a perfectly innocent thing like me, of, like me talking to my wife's belly and saying there's no Santa Claus. I've heard about tonguing the letters of the alphabet and it's supposed to feel so good. Maybe whispering there is no Santa Claus feels just as good. Well, why don't you try that? <laughs> maybe I will. Yeah, maybe you will. This holiday season. Anyway, mm-hmm. so they grow up not knowing or, or knowing there is not a Santa That's Claus. That's right. Right. When they still somehow, they they defied me and chose to believe in it. So they, they really... Really? So they don't yeah. believe? Do they hear from their little friends at school? How old are these school. kids again? I don't recall. They're young children. R- okay. Right. All right. Robbie and Bobby are twins. <laughs> right. And then a few years later, we had Tag. Right. Yeah. He was a surprise. But I it wasn't. Wasn't there a lo- uh, There was a big stretch in between them. I it was a fairly big stretch. Yeah. Right. So Robbie and Bobby are. Are, they're older. They're older, but they're tag. still but they're still young. They're little boys. Right. They're my little boys. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> I you know what? Let's not get specific about this. Let's well, just... they're in school, so that should give you some context for how old they are. Sure, I guess anyone can they're be in, in school grammar at school. any age. Oh, grammar That's school. That's right. Very good. And so their little friends at school talk, fill their head with Santa Claus. Mm. And then they tell me, "Dad, there is a Santa Claus." And I say, "No, there's not." Mm-hmm. But they believe they're friends and not you. Yeah, they laugh at me when I say there's no Santa Claus. Do they point at you as well and laugh at you? They point to each other when they see each other laugh because they're twins. Oh, that's cute. And Tag, he just does whatever the big ones do. Do they dress alike? Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's cute. They I like to, when twins They try do. to trick me. Really? Yeah. Like a parent trap situation? What? Why would they do a parent trap situation on me? I don't, maybe to get you back. Oh, that's right. Your wife. Yeah. Is. Oh, that's <laughs> sorry. right. Sorry to bring up your wife. Here. Boy, oh, I feel, can I tell you something? Sure. Yeah. It's very insulting that you seem to always forget that my wife is dead. I'm sorry, but I feel it's like not the a, most interesting thing about you. No, but it's, you know, a human thing to do to file that information away. <laughs> When you see someone, you're not so like, hey, how's your dad doing? Oh, that's right. He died. So many people pass through these halls. I can't remember everyone's details. Mm, you can or you won't. <laughs> maybe a little yeah, bit. Yeah, maybe. So this holiday season, what are you up to? I'm going to make, I'm doing a show. Mm. I'm going to stream it live. Whoa. Yeah, I'm getting into the 21st century. Okay, congratulations. On Christmas Day? On Christmas Day. Oh, my goodness. And I'm, I'm making special holiday bubbles. Okay, special holiday. Let me uh, uh, imagine these bubbles. When I think of a holiday bubble, uh, I think of like uh, shaped like an ornament or – What? Uh, you can't uh, do that. Okay, so it's just a regular bubble, maybe uh, with glitter on it, like no, looking like a snowflake. the bubble. No, uh, oh, what, what Let makes- me save you the trouble. Okay. I'm going to make themed bubbles from certain soups. So I'm going to make some Hanukkah bubbles from matzo ball soup. Never done that before. Okay, so just regular shaped bubble, but from matzo ball soup. Yeah, and here's the here's the kicker with that. Mm. I'm gonna bring enough soup to make one bubble, mm-hmm. but I'm hoping I'll be able to make eight bubbles. Oh, okay. To mimic the Hanukkah story. Okay, so you're just gonna hope. That you have enough soup. Well, it's not that I'm going to hope. It's that I'm going to definitely bring enough to make one bubble, and then it's up to me to figure out how to stretch it out into eight bubbles. Can you can you have uh, a bubble 
at, at one point and they'd still be, or would it pop it? Or, you know, the, like sometimes you see that where like one bubble, you can have it and it becomes two separate bubbles, but still intact. Oh, you mean have like H-A-L-V-E? Yes. Sorry, should I be pronouncing the L a little more? Hal? I don't know. Anyway. I've exasperated you with this very yeah, idea of... I mean, of I don't. I, I, I thought I stated the concept pretty clearly. I guess I just don't understand. How you, is it going to be a miracle? It's. Not, there's no such thing as miracles. Okay. There's no God. No one's going to come save you. And when you're dead, it's just a black, endless oh, void. This is why no one likes to be around you why? during the holidays. God, you are such a bummer. I'm, I, I don't know why no, I had you on sorry. in December, such a festive month. Well, you can continue to believe all your fairy tales if you want. All right, all right. What, what other types of bubbles do you have here? Well, I'm having some trouble figuring out Bubble the Christmas. Bu- <sighs> sorry, do you hear that a lot? Yeah. <laughs> Look, a joke, a common joke that people make. People like to rhyme things with bubble. They think it's hilarious. Right. Because of the double B sound. Right. It's such a fun word. Is it? <laughs> do, do you hate it? Why? Sometimes I go back and forth. Why not just abandon it? No one seems to like what you do. That's, I, that's not true. Have you ever gotten good uh, reviews or, or feedback from one of your performances? Well... From my wife. Oh. She believed in me. She did, yeah, but but she gave the ultimate feedback after one of your performances, if you'll recall. That, I'm trying to think if you've ever said anything worse to me than that, <laughs> and I'm coming up empty. Sorry, I know it's a sore subject. <laughs> yeah, that I, that I was responsible for my wife's death? Yeah. <laughs> It's a bit of a sore subject. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to just paper over it and never bring it up? I mean, what would you prefer? Maybe next time when you forget that my wife's dead, I won't remind you. <laughs> okay, there we go. But we'll I'll avoid just... that altogether. Okay, very good. Anyway, I'm having a difficulty thinking up... Trouble. <laughs> ...what soup to use for the Christmas bubble. Okay. Because that Christmas red is very specific. Right. So I can't use tomato soup. It's not really the same. It's too orange. It's too orange. Mm-hmm. And then green. I mean, there's a lot of green soups, mm-hmm. but nothing that color that specific Christmas green. What about a minestrone with its nice and red base, and then it has a little vegetables in it that uh, are green? It's too many vegetables get in the way. It'll sog, yeah. You can't make, and if the vegetables are green, they're not, you know, Christmas green, and you can't use the vegetables in the bubble. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, what I'm going to do is, and I, I don't like to do this, but sometimes, as I said, I'll add a fixative or some element to the soup, which is still edible, technically. It's like a flour or some sort of uh, paste? Or? Well, I'll add, like, sulfur. <laughs> <laughs> sulfur? Sulfur. Sulfur or tar. I don't know. Tar. You don't know what? Tar. Yeah. I mean, if that's bursting above people's heads, that's, I mean, that'll make someone's skin it's hardly. It's hardly any tar. Hard, okay. I mean, is it sort of like cigarettes? Yeah. It's the same amount that's in cigarettes. Okay. What's know. the big deal? I'm not putting fiberglass in there. Oh, have you ever put fiberglass in yeah, one of your Yeah, it doesn't right. work well. <laughs> oh, boy. So, I'm going to have to add some stuff to the soup to maybe color it. Okay. To make it look the appropriate shade. Okay, shade of red. Yeah. Or green. Well, well, ideally both. Okay, got it. Half and half? Like, will the bubble be half red and half green? Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. That's not a bad idea. Like uh, one of those cookies. A black and white cookie? Yeah, there you go. But instead, green and red. Sure. But And also a bubble. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of differences, hmm. but... Oh, the, like a zebra, except in, <laughs> instead of black and white, it's green and red, and it's a bubble. <laughs> yes. And not a four-legged animal. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Sure. Yeah, it holds up. Absolutely. <laughs> Good one. You really helped me talk through this. So, what are you going to use to color these bubbles? Well, for the green one, I guess I can use... You know, like in food coloring. Sure, you know. green food coloring. Yeah, right. exactly. They Done. make that. Yeah. Done. I mean, St. Patrick's Day, people make cookies oh. and stuff like that. Yeah, green beer. Green beer. There you go. They do it for the whole river. Sure. <laughs> and for the red, 
I mean, to really get that deep red that Christmas, Christmas red, red yeah. right? Yeah, that we're all accustomed to on wreaths, bows, right, right. ornaments. Well, we'll have to use blood. What's this now? I have to use blood. B- uh, did you? Uh, did, did, uh, did you say blood? Yeah, I said blood. Who? You're gonna put blood into your suit? Not human. What kind of blood? Goat's blood? Yeah, or? goat's blood. <laughs> You're going to sacrifice goats? It's not a son. I'm not going to do like a ritual or anything. I mean, no more than I usually do when Wait, I'm making soup. what kind of soup. ritual do you usually do when you're making soup? Well, when I make soup, you know, I'll say a little something and make the soup, you know. Say a little something like a prayer? Well, like a, more like an incantation, I guess. <laughs> okay, I thought you didn't believe in anything beyond this life. I don't! <laughs> But just covering your bases? Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. look, I've had some close calls. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're back where we started. <laughs> I don't want to get into you slamming me again. Uh, but look, goat's blood. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with that? I mean, the, I do they use, I guess they use ox blood in soups? Or right, no, in tail. shoes. Right, in shoes, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's a color, ox blood. Yeah. No one thinks that's crazy. No, I guess not. But uh Well, so goat's blood in a soup to make it Christmassy. How what percentage of your soup is going to be blood and what percentage is gonna be normal soup? I mean to get it to that color. Sure. That festive color sure. that everyone loves sure. and never has a problem with. Right. 90%. 90% goat's blood. Yeah. So you're just going to be spraying. These children are going to be just covered in blood. Not, well, they. I tell these kids every time, you can't get too close. How close is too close? You know, within, I want to say, 25 feet. 25 feet? Yeah. They, they, they're not going to be able to see this performance if you they're back You can see the bows are pretty big. Ah. Uh. But anyway, I'm live streaming this, so okay. it's not like there's going to be a bunch of kids right in front of me. Uh, yeah, why have an audience at all? You don't want another accident. No, no, I know I don't. I don't need you to condescend to me like that. Although I guess no accident would be as bad as the one that happened before. <sighs> the one where my wife died? Yeah. Thanks for bringing it up. Sure. So uh, you're live streaming this. Yeah. Uh, just blood bubbles for Christmas. It's not called blood bubbles for Christmas. <laughs> it's called. It's called bub bub bub. Merry chunky Christmas. <laughs> bub bub bub. You yeah, said oh oh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's gonna catch on? I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, you know, really, uh, uh, the, the Night Before Christmas is just a story and a poem some uh, racist guy wrote. and it There you go. Caught on and everyone says ho, ho, ho now That's and everything right. else. So, yeah. you know, why not bub, bub, bub? And also, the, the, the A in Christmas is going to be a star of David, so you know that there's some Hanukkah in there, too. Got it. So it's bub, bub, bub. Me- Merry Christmas. Do people are people Merry supposed to say Christmas? Merry Chunky Christmas. Well, I, can, I don't know. I'm not going to tell people how to read. Okay, so but you're saving that uh, clue of the Hanukkah until the almost the very last letter. Boy, people are going to be. Hmm, there's no mention of Hanukkah in this until just the very end. How do you think people read? <laughs> just left to right, my dear boy, unless they're from the Far East. But you read whole chunks of of letters in one when you're looking at a word. I don't know. I like to sound it out when I'm looking Every at Every single word? <laughs> yeah. That's why it's terrible watching that CNN crawl. <laughs> Just try it. It's like it takes me all day. Well, never catch up. Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, speaking of never catching up, um, good luck to you with uh, what this idea. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, what's the website that people can see this? Bub, 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 dot, bub, or <laughs> what do we got? Dot, bu- I wish there was a dot, bub. Is it a dot, gov? <laughs> It's a dot net. Somebody already had bubba bub, 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 <laughs> gov. Oh wait, is it Bill Clinton? <laughs> Bubba himself? Sure. Uh, the AC. He <laughs> ain't cheating. None can argue with well, that. Well, don't say it. <laughs> I'm trying to be genteel. All right. Well, uh, good luck to you, big chunky bubbles. Thanks. Can, I'm sure you mean it. Can you stick around for the rest of the show? We got Neil Patrick Harris on the show uh, coming up in our next segment. Are you excited oh, for that? Yeah. Oh. 
I just remember. Not Sam Neill. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, I'll stick around. All right. We need to take a break. When we come back, that's right. He is here. His first time on the show. Neil Patrick Harris, star of so many things that you love. He is on the show. We'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. Hey, everyone. Talking to you today about our new sponsor. They've been here uh, only a couple of weeks. Zell. Zell. What a name. What is Zell? You know, I didn't know what Zell was either until they started after it. That, uh, I hate to admit it, but I had ignorance when it came to Zell. And now I have a wealth of experience and information because I'll tell you, Zell is a new way to send money to your friends and family from your banking app. That's right. Your friends and your family, they need your money. Right? Why not send it to them through your banking app? What a dream. I've always dreamed of of uh, creating a product that uh, relieves people of their money. And, and Zelle certainly is doing that. Uh, look, cash, it's easy to lose, right? Uh, how many times have I had a jingle jangle in my pocket only to look down and, oh, guess uh, the moths have eaten at those holes in my pockets, and all my quarters are gone. Sorry, friends and family, can't pay you. Checks? Uh, They take a little while to clear, if you know what I mean. But with Zelle, once you are enrolled, the money, it just moves right between bank accounts and typically arrives in minutes. Zoom, 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 money here, money there, money, money everywhere. Zelle. You can do anything with it. You can pay your share of the cost of dad's gift. That happens a lot. Hey, family, here's here's my share of the $20 that, that we spent on dad. <laughs> uh, you can request half the cost of the Christmas tree you bought with your roommate. That happens all the time. Hey, roommate. Oh, really? You don't have cash on you? Well, tell you what. Get your phone out and sell me the money. That shut him up. Or you know what else you could do? Pay the personal trainer you hired after Thanksgiving. Oh, tell me about it, boy. All of that with ease. All thanks to Zelle. It's so easy to use. It works with almost anyone with a bank account in the United States. And don't worry, Zelle is safe and it is backed by major banks, which means you can send money confidently. Just go to ZellePay.com to learn more. That is Z-E-L-L-E. Pay, P-A-Y, dot com. Z-E-L-L-E. That's how you spell Zell. That's not how you Zell spell. <laughs> Zell, this is how money moves. <laughs> Every girl's crazy about a shop dress, man. <laughs> That's right. We're not advertising ZZ Top's greatest hits here today. But the sentiment remains. Every girl's crazy about a sharp-dressed man, where the bout stands for about. That's the ZZ Top promise. You can tell a guy who's got style, right? He looks great. He seems confident, like he's almost like he's ready to launch, the opposite of a McConaughey. But that takes a certain skill set not all of us were born with. Look, a lot of guys, you know, they come out of the womb uh, in a three-piece suit. With a silver spoon in their mouth. Not me. I was naked. I had nothing. I'm still naked and I have nothing. But you know what? There is an easy way to look better. Let me tell you about a little something called Stitch Fix Men. (laughs) Every girl's crazy about the Stitch Fix Men. (laughs) Stitch Fix Men, you got to buy this song. Okay? you got to get the rights to this because I've been singing it. You gotta get the rights of this song. Don't screw me over on this. Oh boy. Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix is the new way to shop for clothes. It's unbelievably simple. Let me take you through it. Just go to stitchfix.com. That's easy, right? Answer a couple of questions about your sizes. Don't worry about it. It's not, you know, no, uh, I know it's personal to tell someone your sizes, but uh, they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about whatever they're going to do with that information. (laughs) Just uh, answer questions about your sizes, what styles you like. I know it's embarrassing to talk about what you like in clothes. They're not going to do anything with this info. Talk about how much you want to spend. That's cool. That, uh, I mean, 
You know, they're not going to get offended if you're like, look, I only want to spend like a hundred dollars. They don't care. They're stitch fix. They're easy going. Stitch fix has clothes for every guy and more importantly, every guy's style, right? It's not just one type of look. All right. Uh, there, there are days, you know, I like to look like a motorcycle mama on Mondays and then on Tuesdays, you know, I like to, I like to look like, uh, a cross between uh, Oscar from The Odd Couple and Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just relax, right? Every guy has several types of styles, different types of looks. Your personal stylist that Stitch Fix gives you then uses your preferences and the other information you enter to select brand new clothes just for you. Now, these items, they're not delivered to your neighbor. They're not delivered to some other state. They're delivered right to your home. You try them on, and here's the best part about it. You only pay for what you keep. You do have to pay for what you keep, though, right? Any, you do have to Okay, yes, I'm getting You do pay for what you keep. Typical business, you pay for what you keep. But just send anything you don't want back. Shipping is free both ways. This is incredible. Get your fix. In quotes. That's, that's their tagline. Much like the show where we talk to interesting people... Stitch Fix's tagline is get your fix on demand or sign up to receive scheduled shipments. Nothing better than just getting a box of cl- a clothes in the mail that you, you didn't even anticipate. I, I know I'm naked now, but I just, I, oh, I love it. When I get a box of clothes in the mail, I toss off everything I'm wearing. And I just dive into it. I love it. Guys of all shapes, sizes, and budgets agree. Defining your new style starts with Stitch Fix. Try them out today. You have nothing to lose. Get started now at stitchfix.com slash bang bang. You'll also get 25% off when you keep all five items in your box. That is stitchfix.com slash bang bang to get started today. Stitchfix.com slash bang bang. Every boy's crazy about a Stitch Fix account. <laughs> Comedy bang bang. We're back here. Big Chunky Bubbles is here with yeah. me. And uh, boy, uh, our, our guest is walking into the studio now. This is very exciting. Uh, and uh, uh, Big Chunky Bubbles, the bub, 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 um, merry, bub, 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 merry, chunky Christmas. Merry, chunky Christmas. With it, with it, with a star of David as the A in Christmas. Right. Do you think people, uh, when they hear merry, chunky Christmas, are going to think it's something else? Like what? Like, I don't know, like chubby chasers are going to tune into this or something? Or? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. It might, might not hurt to... Why? How does a human brain conceive of that? I, I, it never occurred to me that people would. Now it's all I can think about. Merry soupy Christmas, maybe. Merry soupy Christmas? <laughs> Soupy's not a good adjective in a festive context. Worked for soupy sales. People loved him. <laughs> but... People knew that was a nickname. He wasn't describing himself. I'm do you, Soupy. Do you think his very first performance, he was like, hey, I'm Soupy Sales. By the way, Soupy's a nickname. I'm not describing myself. If he didn't, he's crazy. <laughs> and then people are just on board the rest of his career. That's right. He's <laughs> Lebanese, you know. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for that bit of trivia. <laughs> bit of festive trivia here for the holidays. There's season. someone in my life who... <laughs> <laughs> who? Surprises me of every Lebanese celebrity. <laughs> ah, interesting. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> what I'm related to by marriage. Interesting. Yeah. All right. We need to also get also anybody from West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Always informed. Kept up to date. All right, big chunky bubbles. That's... Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Look, we need to get to. That's our... enough out of you, I guess. Well, I mean, honestly, it is enough out of you. Well, you admit it. <laughs> I still want you to continue talking. Look, will, will you please be my co-host and, and talk to our guest of honor? How much does that pay? Uh, exactly zero. Mm. I guess I got nowhere else to go. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad I caught you on an off day. Yeah. All right. Real off day. Are you a fan of our guest of honor? Of course I am. Okay, very good. So uh, please uh, have some questions ready because we're about to start talking to him. What? This is turning into work. <laughs> <laughs> and that, just very basic questions, like, how are you or something like that? Can you, All right. Can I use that one? Okay, please. Yeah, I was going to do it first off the top, <laughs> but feel free. All right. We need to get to him. This is very exciting. He has never been on the show before. This is the show where we talk to interesting people, which is, of course, our tagline that is sweeping the nation, uh, the show where they talk to interesting people, and he certainly fits within that spectrum. Uh, he is star of, literally star of stages and screenses. 
Multiples. Uh, yeah. Bigs and smalls, all uh, stages and screenses. Screenses is my jam. <laughs> he is. Uh, let's let's count it down. On Broadway, we have uh, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, uh, Assassins, several other things. Cabaret. Cabaret. Proof. Proof. I don't with, know what proof is. It, it was a play with uh, that I did with Anne H. And H, is that how it's pronounced? I like so. I, like I, how I, English people say the, the letter H? I think it was H. Interesting. Like H. And, it, and you think so? It never actually came up in conversation? She or? changed her way of behavior all the time. So you never quite knew what that one was okay. happening. Got it. So any day it could be like, it's pronounced Hesh. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes she would whisper a lot. Really? Yeah, we'd do shows and she'd just decide that she was going to talk like this the whole show. Like full performances? Yep, where just, yep. As an actor, that's a thrill, getting so, something new and not being on autopilot. So fun being her paramour when she decides to just not put any pauses in a performance. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> so just like doing a speed through? Like, yeah. what? Wow, interesting. She'd just say the whole line, every single line, and she'd say like that, oh, what are you doing here? It's nice to see you. And then I'd look at her for a second, like, what, what's happening right now? And I'd take an extra pause. Right, so you slow it to down. To sort of get us back. To try to even it out so and the showtime re- remains consistent. Yeah. <laughs> well, just so the audience who's now kind of, their heads are turned like dogs, you know. Right. Are, <laughs> like, what, what is that person saying? <laughs> and so I would call me and then I'd say my next line. And then she'd say her next line really fast, really fast like that. And then I'd just would look at her after did, a minute and say, okay, here we go. Did you ever feel the need to repeat her previous line in order to <laughs> make sure that the audience understood it? or? <laughs> It sounds like what you meant to say was, <laughs> you love me. How many performances of that? I did that for a few months on, wow. the, on the big Broadway. A hundred, two hundred, how many, you do eight I'm in a week or something? I'm not a very good judge of numbers, but okay. probably nine, what comes after three? nine, ten. <laughs> uh, what comes after three, nine or ten? Some, nine and ten, they both come after three, so Chuckles, you are right. Chuckles, do you know the answer? B- big chunky yeah, bubbles. Big, big chunky big, bubble. Sorry, All right, do you want to get to your question before I introduce him? Sure. You've been raising your hand this whole time. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> All right, uh, put it down then. Uh, he's he's called on you. Do I get to do it or not? Yeah, do it. You in the back, big chunky bubbles. How are you? <laughs> really? That's your question? Yeah. I'm sorry. He he's was had, very excited. He was waving his hand. I, yeah, I, I didn't even want to do this. <laughs> I was assigned a task. I, but Neil, oh. if you would if you would just Chunky. answer it, I would really appreciate it. I'm uh, I'm very excited to be here. Big chunky bubbles. Mm. All right. Can mm-hmm. I can I make a confession? Yeah. Oh, it, sure. I, I guess co-hosting duties include confessions. So go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> you said duties. <laughs> I was thinking you were Sam Neil. Oh. Why did you? Th- oh, because of his name, Neil. By the way, we don't know that it's not. I haven't introduced him yet. We'll, it, we'll get no, to you. Well, I, do well, I can tell you, it's not. <laughs> Were you, do you mean Thor Ragnarok, Sam Neill? Yeah, the New Zealand actor. Right, from uh, Jurassic uh, 1 and uh, three. 3. Right. You big, big he, Sam Neill fan? Of course I am. I love his wine, two paddocks. <laughs> Did you say two pox? Two paddocks. <laughs> two paddocks. So much better than two box wine. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, a big fan of the piano? I love it. What about the movie? The well, piano. Boy, oh boy. Okay, let's get to our, our yeah, first guest. Let's. We've talked about his stage experience extensively at this point, but his screen experience? My gosh. Hello. Uh, we have, of course, a start, has, has been acting uh, almost longer than I've been sentient. Uh, <laughs> he started off at a very young age in, the, of course, the Doogie Hauser series. Not, uh, a, not a film. Not a film, mm-hmm. no. Although. Filmed. Fil- yes, definitely, uh, and was projected into people's television sets. That S- None can dispute that. Small screens. Yes, of course. Had, and remember the screens back then? They were so small. Tiny. They were like 13 inches, some of them. Had big tubes. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine if we were just huge now on these big screens? We'd need to reinforce the walls. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, of course, we're going to do that. He was in <laughs> How I Met Your Mother for 10 seasons? Is that Nine seasons. Nine seasons. My Nary gosh. a decade. Wow, and ten of course comes after nine, and uh, That's right. Currently on a series of unfortunate events on uh, a little platform called Netflix, uh, which we are uh, in the shadow of right now. Yeah, who isn't? And <laughs> <laughs> and of course, he is in an upcoming film, Downsizing, which premieres December twenty second in a theater near you. I hope. I hope you live next door to a theater. Uh, yeah. If, if yeah. you're listening out there, not you, Neil. No, I, I don't. You don't live next door to a theater. No, about a block away. <laughs> 
<laughs> a block away from which theater, by the way, so it's, I can get a gauge on your address. Of, it's in Harlem, so it's on a it's like 125th oh, really? and uh, Lennox. Oh, interesting. I didn't know uh, that you lived in uh, New York City. There's a drink for you, by the way. Uh, he also has a, a children's book coming out, The Magic the Magic Misfits? The or Magic just, Misfits, indeed. Uh, and it is out or not out? It, it, it is out in a bookstore near you. It's out in a, and do you live near a bookstore, I hope? Um, no, not in Harlem. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> not a lot of reading going on there. Mm, interesting. Weird. Yeah, that's an interesting thing about that. Let's let's just get to his name. Everyone out there has guessed it, of course. Neil Patrick Harris is What's here. Happening? Hello. It's so nice to be here. I, I am a fan of the show. Oh my I, gosh. I had never heard it until I read uh, the New York Times profile on the show, which was what, your 1,000th or? 500th. 500th. Yes. That right. felt like 1,000 <laughs> once I started listening it's to it. It's a pretty long show, yeah. Wait, and, uh, what? <laughs> The New York who the uh, new the New York Times or New Yorker or something I, I can't remember what it was New York Times it's a, it's a New York Times newspaper they did an article about this show yeah uh, yeah I, uh, big chunky bubbles that uh, you're a recent person to be on it but it, it's been around for a while and people enjoy did they mention me in the article Neil I don't really recall the article did, did they, they mention, mention big did, chunky bubbles did they mentioned some like li- like little little smooth. Little smoothie, little smoothie, but they yeah. didn't mention. Big I don't think they mentioned anything. little smoothie. No, uh, sorry, no. Sorry. I mean, you, you're, you're, but you're more of a recent favorite. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> sorry, I'm you not. Got, you got an answer for everything. I, I don't want to keep apologizing to you throughout this interview. We, uh, 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 our guest of honor is sitting here. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. <laughs> you, you literally stopped me. <laughs> But let's talk to Neil for a bit. I mean, when you have a star of this caliber, uh, the questions, they come fast and furious in your mind. What can one ask? Were you in the fast and furious? <laughs> I was cut out of the first one. Were you really? Yeah, Interesting. I wasn't were you, were you, neither fast nor furious. Were you, was the car not up to snuff? Uh, I was uh, supposed to be fixing the car. I was the guy <laughs> and the hood was open mm-hmm. and I was very slow and pretty happy. Like <laughs> Too happy. Average. They're all happy. very serious. Well, They're you know. mad. And uh, talk fast. Are you bummed that you missed out on? I talk as fast as Ann H. <laughs> and I didn't like it. I just would talk slow and I they cut me out of the film. I guess if you're talking too slowly, then Vin Diesel is like, hey, now you're working my side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> True that. You know, when you're one of his friends, you're actually family. <laughs> Can you tell me about this catchphrase of yours? The show where we talk to interesting people. What okay, do you think? So, well, here's what I have. I thought about it. Okay, great. I've actually thought about it listening as a listener oh, good. loving the show. And I have a thought. I think it's a little bit boring. Bo- boring? And I'll tell you why. Okay. Because I laugh my face parts off uh. when, I, when I listen to the show. Hmm. Hmm. But I feel like the, the show that where we talk to mm-hmm. interesting people. Mm-hmm. Mm. So evocative. But it's, it could be like, like a British baking show. It could be... It could be just new, uh, nightly do, news. Do British baking shows have interesting people on them? I guess I, I haven't really thought about that. I, uh, uh, yes. I mean, it sounds very specific what? to my show. I, I don't so think it he- could really apply to other shows. Name another show where they talk to interesting people. I don't know. Um, kind of like all the late night talk, sh- talk shows. That's kind of I haven't they, seen. I haven't seen any. The These Charlie are, Rose. Show. Charlie Rose, an interesting. <laughs> the show where they used to talk to interesting people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So here's my pitch. Okay, what do you got? The show that talks to the interestingest people. <gasps> Whoa! The interestingest of people. Neil, can I tell you something? I was maybe going to retire this thing at the end of this year, and now you've given it a new lease on life. The show where we talk to the interestingest. The interestingest. The interestingest. Of people. Of people. Yeah. Of pe- the of is very important in this, in the musicality of it. Yeah, in Scansion. Right, exactly. It's almost like a Shakespeare line. <laughs> the interesting of people. Da-da. Yes. It Iambic implies maybe it implies some humor. Sure. Oh, sure. Interestingest. Of course. Is yeah, it's fun. Not a word. <laughs> right. The, the, uh, with the exception of the big chunky bubbles episodes, the show where they talk to the yeah! interestingest of people. Why would you have Ouch. to do that? Ouch, man. Boy, oh boy. Is it, is it like this always when you come? Always. Host? He's so rude. I, you're the rude one, Big Chunky Me? Bubbles. Me? Yeah. What, what did I ever yeah, say out that of was all rude? Of, out of all of our guests, you're the one that seems to hate me the most. That can't be true. <laughs> 
What now? Ha- that's what a happened? burden on me. What happened? Did you hate? Did you hate him so much? I don't hate him. I just don't particularly like him. I guess he's, a per- he's very rude. He's a particular kind of misanthrope. He just never seems satisfied enough. I don't know. But the show where they talked to the most interesting est of people. You're making it too complicated. That's going to be tough for me to say. The show where they talk. We use it they? Is that what you say? They? Uh, yeah, they, it can't be What do be you they. say? I just, what, when you the show say where it. we. Where we talk to the interestingest of people. The show where we talk to the interestingest. Oh, <sighs> oh boy. Here, I got to write this down. I got to write this down. Yeah, the show that ought to help. Interestingest. Yeah, not, not, just the inter- not just interesting people, but the interestingest people. The, int- the show where we talk to the interestingest. Uh, Why interesting, can't you do interesting that? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting nest. Not in, not inter. Why don't you just call the show interesting nest? <laughs> like empty nest. Like empty nest. Yeah, like empty nest. Like the sequel to Richard Mulligan's Empty Nest. That's right. Oh, you consider it Richard Mulligan's Empty Nest? <laughs> <laughs> why wasn't his name above the title? And by the way, Neil, why wasn't your name above the title with uh, how, how I Met Your Mother? Neil Patrick, Neil Patrick Harris is How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> I know the title isn't about your character, but... If just the ensemble in that show, I think, would have had, had issue, taken issue with that. By the way, presumably his character also met the mother. Well, I guess they all did. How, and why yeah. wasn't it called How We All Met Your Mother? It was a first-person tale. It was, but I mean, he he's including everyone else, like how we all met this mother of yours. True, but uh, did you did you did very self centered? Did you see the show? Oh yeah, of course. And so it starts with the, the the guy in the future talking to his kids. Sure, of course, and he hence, can hence the title. Right? How me and my friend? How about this? How me and my <laughs> friends all met your mother? That would have been better on a billboard for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, and speaking of that show, are you guys going to do a Will and Grace thing where it's just like, hey, forget the last season. We're just now it's just we're hanging out. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I, that's happening a lot with the, yeah. the shows where they're bringing them back. It's Didn't just they like do bo- boy meets girl again or something. Yeah, well, or it's Fuller girl. House. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just like hanging out now. It's just like Barney and the gang. Yeah. You know, Barney and pals. Don't you kind of feel like once you've done something for a while, though, you're ready to move on to other things? I don't know. I would do that comedy Bang Bang TV show forever. But uh, you know what? Uh, apparently the public uh, and the network agreed that I it should not continue. I got a co-host question. Yeah, what do you got? What do you mean when you say now we're just hanging out? Well, you know, like Will and Grace, I think, didn't some of them get married at the end of that show or something? And then they just they, they tossed out the uh, events wrapping up the show and said, eh, now we're just we're just doing more episodes. Reboot. Yeah, but there's still there's stories. There's stories, but <laughs> I, I don't mean to imply that it's, it's literally just calls. conversations. That's what it sounded like. They just turn on a camera and they're all sitting around on a couch or something. Well, excuse me, big chunky bubbles. Now who's the rude one? You. Picking apart every word I say? I just was confused, and I'm sure some of the listeners were too. Okay, don't speak for don't the Don't you listeners. turn me down when this I yell? Awkward. <laughs> so Neil, tell us about. Uh, your current projects, we have Downsizing the Film, yes, comes sir. out uh, in roughly, uh, I would say, 10 days or so from uh, this airing. Uh, I saw it last night, Dynamite Film. Thanks. Uh, Alexander Payne's new one. Uh, his last film, was it The Descendants or did he do one after that? I'm, I can't recall. Uh, still, Nebraska. Nebraska, yeah, Nebra- yes. Was Nebraska the last one? Uh, it was, I yes. Know. I think you're right. <laughs> Featuring friends of the show, uh, Will Forte and uh, Bruce Bob Dern. Odenkirk, Bruce, Bruce Dern, Dern Big, Big. June Squibb. <laughs> what if she was on the show every week? <laughs> Just wondering what's going on. Is she on. not? <laughs> I wish she was. She should be on next week. <laughs> June, Squibb. June, if you're out there, please get on this. Uh, downsizing, uh, you play a character that I was, uh, and I was watching this film and I'm like, wow, look at what's going on in Neil's mind during this scene. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you're obviously a character who has ambitions, doesn't know, uh, exactly his place in the world, uh, but certainly wants more than maybe he has and, uh, isn't satisfied with where he's at and, and definitely has, uh, goals and, and things he wants to achieve. Is that safe to say? That's what I got from it. Well, I, yeah, but I... I was, I'm not the lead in the movie. I, to me, you were. Yeah, I, I'm, in one, I'm in one scene in the movie. I so and I may have turned it off right after that one scene. Yeah, you took a lot. We, you had a lot of backstory that you added to my scene. That's just. I mean, when you're watching an actor of your caliber, that's what comes up. Those I'm thoughts. essentially the infomercial actor that when uh, Matt Damon and, and Kristen Wiig's couple come and uh, are interested in maybe going to leisure land and, and downsizing themselves. And we've talked about the, this on the show before. Mm. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's a movie with a like a shrinking ray. 
with a shrinking ray gun. <laughs> yeah, there's a super villain. They basically like point a gun at someone Uh-oh. and go pew 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 pew, and then they go wow 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 boing boing. Hi everybody. That's so funny because Alexander Payne made us all talk like this the entire time. And then they altered our high voices to make him sound. That was my biggest like question watching ourselves. the film is every, every time I've seen a little tiny person in a film, uh, they have those high voices. And then suddenly I'm watching a film and everyone has normal voices. Thank you for answering that. Why would someone that was that tiny, though, have such a high pitched voice? That doesn't make sense. It would just to sound me. like they would be really far away. Just be quiet. Yeah. They wouldn't have. Like, sort of like Anne Heche. Not quiet. <laughs> Well, during some performances, though. Yeah, during the occasional matinee. <laughs> really? She'd save it for the matinees? Oh, I'd save it for something. <laughs> then she'd just blow it out on Saturday night? Yeah. What, being a Broadway actor, <laughs> what's, what, is the, what is the night where you're like, oh, man, it's going to be a good show on fill in the blank? Is it Saturday? Is it Friday? Saturday nights are typically not the best. That's usually really? when, when people have, uh, have had a full weekend and they went and had a big, nice dinner already. They're overly satiated. They've had a lot to drink, and then they sit and they digest when they're watching the show. <laughs> the best are usually Friday nights, Thursday nights, when the weekends are coming. What about Tuesday? Like you're fresh off Monday, having Monday off? Yeah, Tuesdays are all right. Yeah, Wednesday. With Hedwig, I didn't have to do too many matinees. I didn't want to mm. be performing to old ladies who were 90 years old doing I tell all you, these, uh, these punk rock anthems and stuff. On New Year's Eve, I was in uh, the New York metropolitan area uh, a few years back, and uh, I saw a New Year's Eve matinee of Patti LuPone and Mandy Patinkin. <laughs> At Lincoln <laughs> Center? Uh, was no, it one of those? It, no, it was in a it was in a tiny theater. I mean, a Broadway-sized theater, so I guess above 99 or whatever. And... Uh, uh, we were, and I didn't really realize where I had bought the tickets, and they were literally the front row. Oh man! And everyone, it's New Year's Eve matinee. Everyone is over a hundred years old, <laughs> other than us, <laughs> and they all were sleeping during it. And Patty Lapone, just searching for some connection, just sang every line at my wife and I. <laughs> wow! Look. <laughs> Finding the couple. Just finding the two who are like, yay, who we're happy to be here. <laughs> what a thrill, I got to tell you. You ever have shows like that? I've seen Patti LuPone's boobs. Really? Yeah. Tell, us, tell us that story More in More than once. Wow. I did a, I did a couple of versions of Sweeney Todd with her. The, and uh, she was Mrs. Lovett to my Tobias. Oh, interesting. Where I weirdly did a bit of a Mandy Patinkin impression <laughs> musically. Even though he didn't. He, Play, was, he wasn't no, in Sweeney Todd. No, but you know how Manny Patinkin's voice starts mm-hmm. to sort of talk like he's a bit, a bit up here Coffee. like this. Come here, the rhythm of a drum. Bang, 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 rhythm of a drum. And so that was my interpretation of, of uh, Toby. Did she ever say Nothing's to you like, harm you not while I'm around. Did she ever say to you like, hey, ha, hey, ha. Manny Patinkin is a friend of mine. Oh, you're, you're telling me this, Scott, yourself? Oh, no, I... I Manny Patinkin's a friend of yours and I'm insulting you? Look, I was in one film with him. <laughs> And he did not seem interested in talking to me at all <laughs> during the just, off hours. I just dig his voice. But yeah. Patti Lapone's awesome and super hilarious. And when she gets excited by stories, she'll lift her shirt up and show her boobs. Really? Yeah, she loves to do it. Her own stories or your stories? Her, her own stories. Oh, okay. When she gets worked up. She'll she'll uh, she'll flash her knocks. Stories involving those jammers, or just general <laughs> stories uh, um, th- that uh, I think a couple times of, e- of each. Interesting. A couple times. I think once she was talking about her boobs and showed them. Another time, I was laughing about the fact that she'd done it before and she did it again. And then a couple times, she was just in the moment and just liked to like to be a flapper girl. Um, amazing, a flapper girl. You know. <laughs> Um, she yelled at me once for getting a phone call during a performance. Oh, that was you? Wait, that was you. <laughs> wow. See Chunky Bubbles? I went to see Gypsy. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to do that. You're not. I was waiting for a very important call about a gig. And so go somewhere else. Yeah, go to the lobby. Well, I can't go to the lobby because they had routed the rotary phone into the theater. I was in the very last row. It was a rotary phone? Yeah, it was they... the theater's rotary <laughs> Why phone. Why is the theater providing That's a rotary phone? Quite well, an exception that they're I, making. I provided the phone and I just plugged it into their jack. <laughs> I wanted to have a good connection. You, you need a landline for a good have a connection. Good, good connection with Patty Lapone. I sure now. didn't. She humiliated me in front of everyone. Patty Lapone. Uh, seriously, that's what I should said have that called her. her. You would have seen those boobs a third time. <laughs> uh, 
now, Neil, you also have this children's book, The Magic Misfits. And this yeah. this sounds really interesting because a lot of times uh, I'll read a children's book and I'll think, eh, what did that take someone like 10 minutes to write? You know? Right? I think the same like thing. like one sentence per page. Why right? are you reading children's books? And they don't even have good – that's an interesting <laughs> question. Scott, what? I'm trying to work my way up to the great American novel. Where are you reading these children's books? You know, I mean, I have my places, my secret spots. You go to secret <laughs> spots. I mean, this is coming out way weirder than I expected it to. Do you just hang out in the children's section of Barnes and Noble? To be I, honest, that's one of my secret spots. Don't blow it up for me. There are chairs there. That's true. They're they're really tiny though. I'm a big gentleman. You like to sit in <laughs> the tiny chairs and read children's books aloud. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I hear your point. That thank you. That there's. Two sentences per page. At and most. Even at the end, it's not a, a, a real moral has not been imparted. Has imparted. Right. No lesson has been learned. So now what – but yours is very different. Well, David and my husband have two children who are twins and they are just turned seven. And so we've been reading to them every single night uh, since they came home. Do they force you to or is this something you like to do? Uh, no, it's something that we like to do. It's sort of the, the going to bed process. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I thought that if I was going to ever do a, a kid's book for them and, and Magic Misfits was it, it would be a picture book and it would be what, 30, 40 pages and pretty simple. But then this cool idea came to me and it seemed like it would be better expanded. So that's actually a series of four books. Really? And the first book just came out and one will come out a, a year for the next, uh, let me count. One, two, three, seven, carry the... The next four years. Four. Yep. So the next, so it's uh, four in, books, like four suits and a uh, deck of cards. Whoa! You're blowing my mind. This one's about diamonds. <laughs> so this first one's about diamonds. Yep. A boy and, named uh, Carter Locke okay. is uh, raised by his uncle Sly, who's not very nice, and has taught him magic, but the bad kind of magic: picking pockets and stealing watches and that's three not card the kind of monte. Magic you want to do magic no. that's for nefarious goals. Mm-mm. He leaves that dude, jumps on a train, winds up in a small town called Mineral Wells, finds himself uh, alone, meets some other kids who dig magic, and a purveyor of a magic shop named Mr. Vernon, Dante Vernon. Dante Vernon. Indeed. You're saying that as if you're going to be playing the part in the eventual screen yeah. adaptation. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a bit older than myself, but I... I, I throw a white mustache on. Aesthetics that never stopped me. <laughs> and uh, and then they all realize that they can work together using their magical abilities. Uh, uh-huh. Not abilities, but their magical yearnings and interests to stop B.B. Basso, this big giant uh, head of a carnival, mm. who is uh, there to steal uh, the town's diamonds. I see. That's Interesting. The, that's the Cliff's Notes version. And by the way, who is this Cliff? Who is this guy? Who, is it, was it a guy? I hope it's not Cliff Huxtable. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. That changes the Talk game. about an interesting person. <laughs> the interesting est. I said it. Entering it is entering it. <laughs> something about Cliff Huxtable just <laughs> like <laughs> rebooted my brain or something. So yeah, so I'm, I, I so I wrote that first book. It's come, it came out, and it's doing quite well. It's a, a number three on a on a New York Times bestseller list. It this has is magic incredible. tricks within it. I think it's fun. I like magic, right? And then you also teach these children how to do magic tricks in the. Is it in the margins? Is it footnotes, or is it a section in the back? There's a uh, a mysterious narrator that's talking to the reader, first person style, uh, who we don't quite know who that is, and so he will editorialize, interject in the middle, and then stop the proceedings and uh, and say, now it's time to learn a trick. And so there's three or four of those. Okay. And is this some sort of like masked magician thing where magicians of the world are now upset at you for revealing the secrets? Interesting that you say that because I am, I'm big into magic. I've loved it for a long time. Aren't you on the board of the Magic Castle, my dear boy? I was on the board and I was the president for three years. And since I've moved to New York, I'm no longer, but I'm, yes, I'm a big proponent of all of that and very against the exposure of magic um, because no one wants to see a magician's wang. (laughs) <laughs> and so I uh, was worried, and I, 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 I <laughs> and so I, I made sure that the tricks that I was using were f- very uh, meant for kids, uh, fully were, within the public domain, searchable. Pretty much, I went mm-hmm. and found old magic books that were from the 30s, 40s that were made for kids. There's actually mm-hmm. Jerry Lewis teaches magic book. Really? Yeah, hardcover with his face and the thin <laughs> on the cover. Which and Jerry inside, Lewis is it? Is it like the young fun one or yeah, the young, old like no. surly chewing on a cough drop? No, thankfully <laughs> young fun uh, cinder fella. 
the women aren't funny, Jerry Lewis. <laughs> exactly. And so I got a couple of those uh, tricks. That's uh, amazing. What is the most complicated trick you know or, or can perform? Uh, let me amend this. Complicated. What, uh, what, what's your showstopper? That's a better question, right? Mm-hmm. Red Big Chunky Bubbles? BCB? What? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I didn't know you could use your phone so well. Hey, I got a, Yeah, but once I got a, a you know a portable phone. <laughs> <laughs> so the, you didn't have a portable? You, That's the biggest thing of the. I phones. had one, but I needed a clear connection. All right. All I right. have a magic question. Yes, sir. That movie. Now you see me. Mm-hmm. It's all about magic people. Then they make a sequel. What was it called? Now You See Me Too. Why wasn't it called Now You Don't? It's a fantastic question. <laughs> because what then what would the third one be called? Around the corner where the fudge is made? Ew. That's disgusting. That's a di- I'm sorry, that's a different rhyme. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, that sounds so gross. Have you never heard that before? No. I'm slightly turned on and I'm... Think that's also kind of disgusting. Can but you, if you made a movie called Milk Milk, you'd definitely make the sequel <laughs> Lemonade. Lemonade. Maybe. What if Beyonce's Beyonce first Beyonce album was Milk Milk? Milk, 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 milk. Oh, no, no, we were both rushing to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in that competition, I won. Well, I can only speak so quickly. I think the listeners won. <laughs> that's true. Um, well, are you bummed you weren't in that movie? I mean, they make a whole movie about like cool magicians who like wear fedoras and. I was not, not bummed that Daniel Radcliffe got to be sort of the fun villain in the sequel. Yeah. He got to have this James Bond villain role. It's, I mean, he only he's a fake magician. You're like a real one, you know? I, I guess he's he's earned his his magical stripes. Ah, the boy who lived. Oh my god. He goodness. is a nice guy. He is a very nice guy. He's although, waved his wand around enough. I said that with confidence and then I realized I've never met him nor ever <laughs> been around him at all. But I believe I saw him on Broadway and that was where my impression of that was. Did you see him in, in How to Succeed How to in succeed. Business? Yes, along with John Larroquette. And I liked him in that and I liked the fact that he would do that after all of the Harry Potterness. It sounds fun, right? You it's know, a like you're old move to go out there and stuck working on a green screen for 8 years or whatever and then you just want to be out in the people, you know? Yeah, but he could just do a play. He went and did a proper musical with a lot of choreography he and did singing. Cartwheels? Yeah, they flipped him around. Oh my gosh. He has a guy. small little thing, so. Right, that's true. Uh, you you're a, a, a taller uh, gentleman, 7'4". Seven, 7'4". Four. Seven, four. And and what's interesting about that is I I watch you on the screens is, mm. and uh, I've always been like he's so tall how are they doing this do they usually dig like a one two foot ditch I slouch a lot and there's there's trenches right little, that's what little, it is little trench, trench coats is what you're talking about <laughs> yeah. there's trenches people wear boxes on their shoes mm-hmm. yeah when they're around I've me. always thought that how tall are you you seem pretty tall yourself yeah I'm not uh, your size but I'm 6'2 or so oh, and uh, yeah it's tough you, you know there. there are uh, not a lot of us out there you know what I mean <laughs> I just feel bad for my shoulders yeah. But when you're as tall as I am, you have to really keep, you know, you, gotta, you want to look people in the eye. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want to just stare at bald spots all day. I found that it's very difficult to learn, uh, to, to gauge if anyone is short or not when you're as tall as we are. Sure. Because you just see everyone is shorter. And then someone will say, like, ah, I'm short. And you go, oh, you are? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you ever find that to be the case? It's sort of like when you're in a really tall building and you're watching fireworks and, and they sh- they're probably impressive when you're down looking at them up. But when, right. you're, when you're up high, they're just a little pop, pop, pop. Just, that's exactly what we yeah. experience every single day. Think, I've never thought of that metaphor. Yeah. That's, a, that's exactly what it's like. Neil, you got to tell us what's coming up in the future. You, you uh, obviously have eight projects going at any single time. I have a lot of stuff going on right now. I'm about to start filming season three of Series of Unfortunate Events, filming in Vancouver, British Columbia, in Canada land. How long do you spend up there? A good oh, five months or so? I've spent a lot of time there in the last mm. two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... Uh, and uh, I love it there, actually. Have you been to Vancouver? I have. I got engaged there. Really? I did, my dear <clears> boy. Really? Yes. Where, mm-hmm. Whereabouts? On the uh, on a boat uh, out there in, uh, you know, where the, all that water is? <laughs> the bay? <laughs> yeah. Vancouver Bay? Yeah, I believe that's what it was. BC yeah. Bay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm working Speaking on— Speaking of BCB. Yeah. Oh, you said VC Bay. <laughs> VC Bay. Mm-hmm. A little different. Mm-hmm. Thanks for remembering I'll, I'm alive. <laughs> Sorry, do you want to get in on this? He's no, I don't, want, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. You're supposed to be asking questions. What's your favorite Neil Patrick How Harris? How are you now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm better. I'm oddly better there now. There we go. What a scoop. What's your favorite project that Neil has been involved in? 
and ask him a question about that. <sighs> All right. Let's so much see. to choose from. Uh, he has a, a an IMDb page as long as the internet itself. I was the token what? white guy and undercover brother. <laughs> Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> Wait, you love that movie? I've seen every Eddie Griffin film. <laughs> I, how many are we talking? All of them. <laughs> okay, well, sure. All right, just think of your question, but you, you have you have a series of unfortunate events coming Indeed. up. Indeed, as uh, an actor, I'm producing a, a, a magic show in New York called- Which one? Called In and of Itself. I love that show. I've seen it. It's- uh, Derek Delgadio, one-man show. a wonderful show. It's still going on. That's great. Indeed, it keeps extending there. He's, he's, it's fantastic. My, uh, my wife went out to the brick and almost stole it, and I said, save that for other people to come around and discover. And, nice. And she, and she was bummed, but then an hour later, she was like, I'm glad I didn't take the brick. Because yes. then people could go see the brick. So anyway. Every show, a gold brick vanishes from the theater and appears where an audience member chooses, and mm -hmm. that gold brick actually does appear there mm -hmm. at, wherever they want every mm -hmm. single night. An amazing he's pretty, show. He's pretty phenomenal. So that's going on. And the uh, Magic Misfits book and the downsizing uh, film and... Academy Award for downsizing for your performance this year? <laughs> Likely not. I worked the, the final day of the film. I mean, Helen Mirren got one for Shakespeare in Love, right? Was that her in that? Or that no? Was her. Judy Dench. Judy oh, that was. Is that racist? That's racist. Super <laughs> racist. <laughs> How, how long was she in it? She was in it like 10 minutes or Wasn't something. Wasn't Judy Dench in the big chill? <laughs> That's you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have to know everything? I thought of my question. Okay, what do you got? You were in American Horror Story. I was. Why are those billboards so unpleasant? <laughs> I wish I I knew that answer. The billboards are are more shocking in many ways than the than the shows themselves. Not as bad as the strain. That oh, one had man, a, a boy. worm coming out of an eyeball. How about it? That was a scary film. Did you did, did you go to that do that that it uh, haunted house that they had here in Hollywood? No, I didn't see that it, one. The disrupt traffic. Oh, really? I think so. They built the whole it house. They so, did? A walk through haunted house, like a pop up haunted house. That Where was, was I? Actually on Sunset and Gower. Or I something. did see a comic con. They were a little. They hired a bunch of little. Uh, I, I presume they were children, but they. I guess they could have just been short people. But uh, in in yellow slickers, wandering around with balloons, red balloons, and not talking to anyone, just like walking through the crowd oh yeah, that, yeah where was spooky. this this was at comic con oh cool in the middle of the street yeah did you see that movie I did see that movie what did you think super loved it super scary yeah you like it what's very your, tasteful billboard what's your uh, what's your favorite movie of all time of all time mm -hmm. I know you have clue your, the movie clue the movie with Michael McKean yeah yeah <laughs> really really truly yeah really truly and and uh which ending is your favorite a b or c uh i like uh ending c mm -hmm. the, the what the, what i guess is the real one on the, well, uh, the DVD. real one yeah where, where they all kind of done it mm -hmm. interesting oh, good shot green did you see it when it was out in theaters i did and did, did, did you I went multiple times do you remember the newspaper endings. ad where it would where every single uh theater would have like this one showing a this one showing b I thought that was a fantastic idea. It was such a good idea. I we love the crazy structure stuff. We tried to do it with uh, the Bang Bang TV show with our mystery episode that had Jason Alexander in it. And I was like, I want to have a different ending for the New York feed, the Central Time feed, and the LA feed. And IFC said, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> so anyway. That's a drag. <laughs> I had a show I was producing uh, uh, called Neil's Puppet Dreams. Hmm. That was a web series that I did uh, with the Jim Henson puppets, the alternative puppets. And we were doing season two, and we got uh, uh, some money to do it uh, from a company called CISO. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, no. We, is this we, recently? We had scripts. If you don't know, I have something to break to you. <laughs> no, it's about to happen on CISO. <laughs> we, uh, uh, actually, we, Neil, can I talk to you for a second off air <laughs> about CISO? What do you tell me? <laughs> It's okay. I don't want to ruin your appearance here, but uh, that was a big. Womp, womp. Oh, tell me about it. It's so much of my business Dude. down the drain. <laughs> All right, look, we need to take a break. Uh, when we come back, uh, Big Chunky Bubbles, you're going to be uh, still with us? Yeah, I guess. All Woo right. Uh, and uh, we all, this is exciting. We have a professional employee. He's going to join us. Neil, uh, is it, I mean. A professional employee? A professional employee. <laughs> kind of an that oxymoron. That sounds interestingest, doesn't it? <laughs> it sees, he sounds like one of the most interestingest of guests you'll have. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> oh, man, I bet you got a new business. But you think you gotta wait till good old that New Year's baby kicks old man year out? 
<laughs> you know, Brett. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> you know, when the, the new year baby comes along and kicks that old man uh, 2017, old year, old year out. Yeah. You know when that happens. I love when that happens. <laughs> the, and uh, uh, the baby gets one day older every day of the new year. Right. Until, until he's an old man at the end of 365 days. Yeah. So I guess one day is equivalent to approximately six like, months. No, six I mean, months. Uh, three months, four months, somewhere in the four months. Yeah. So, you know, so uh, by January, the end of January, he's a teenager, certainly. Yeah, we should go through the, through with the end every of each month, month and figure old. out how old he is. We don't yeah. have time for that, but I'd tell you what you have time for. Uh, you have time before the end of the year to start your business. You don't have to wait for this baby new year to get his butt in here. If you're ready, why start in the new year? Why wait till then? Forget it. The future is coming. Make it brighter with Squarespace. Squarespace has beautiful templates. And you know these templates... They're not just some jerk sat down and was like, oh, I bet I can make a template. And and they came out beautiful by accident. That never happens. No, these beautiful templates are created by world-class designers. That's how Squarespace got them beautiful. Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a new and unique website. That's what they do. That's all they do. That's all Squarespace does. And that's all we require of it. Showcase your work, showcase your blog, publish content. You can even sell products and services of all kinds. They don't care what you sell. I mean, they probably do. There's probably some stipulation. Right, Brad? Yeah, you probably can't sell. It's not like the dark web. No, oh, man, yeah. that dark web. I went on it the other day, by the way. Oh, it's really? It's a scary place. You got in there? I got in there. Yeah, I had a secret I password. I saw you in there. Well, you, here's what you do. Instead of using Times New Roman font or whatever when you're typing in your search bar. Yeah, I always make sure it's Times New Roman. No, no. Use, oh. use wingdings. Oh. That's all it is. Just the symbols? Just the symbols, yeah. Just type in wherever you want to go, like darkweb.com using wingdings. You're in there. Wow. Doesn't work for Squarespace, though. Uh, you can sell whatever you want. I'm just going to tell you right now. You can sell whatever you want. They don't care. You uh, Customize everything. All right, you can, from look and feel to settings and products, customize whatever you want or take what they give you. I don't know what type of person you are. And it is all optimized for mobile right out of the box. They don't send you any boxes, by the way. I think your computer is right out of the box, maybe, I don't know. But use Squarespace's analytics to help you grow in real time, just like that New Year's baby I was talking about. There is nothing to install, <laughs> patch, or upgrade ever. Although, if you do have a question, that doesn't bother them. They're not uh, touchy about questions. They don't care. In fact, they hired a whole division of people to deal with your questions. They have award-winning 24-7 customer support there to help. They won the supporties. That's right. The uh, the coveted supporties, Brett. Yeah. It's they incredible. Just, they swept the support. They swept it. <laughs> yeah. They swept. They, in fact, they were the only people nominated in all categories. All categories. Ah, oh, amazing what Squarespace does. A dream is just a great idea that doesn't have a website yet. That, you know, that's pretty good. I should, I should write that down. But um, you can make it a reality with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you are ready to launch the opposite of McConaughey, use the offer code BANGBANG to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That is squarespace.com, squarespace.com, offer code BANGBANG. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang. We Welcome are back to the show. To I'm now your you co speak up. <laughs> I'm trying to do what you want me to do. All right, go ahead. I'm your co-host, Big Chunky Bubbles. <laughs> and I'm your regular host. Sure. I We're guess we would be co-hosts. I mean, you can't be a co-host and then a host. I've always wondered about that. You know what I mean? Like, they're both co-hosts. One person can't be a host and then the other co-host. 50-50. Right? Exactly. Yeah, just, it's the Seth Rogen special. But it's one person always has more of an ego, and they have to be the host. Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> Why can't it be host and vice host? Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. I'm your vice host, Big Junky <laughs> Bubbles. And if anything happens to you, I become the host. You're a heartbeat away. <laughs> <laughs> Although that does sound a little like you're going to be hosting the television show Vice. Have you, do you ever have any dream to do that? Of course I do. <laughs> all, right, all right. Who who doesn't grow up wanting to host the TV show Vice? I uh, someone like me wanted to be Carson. You want to be uh, the host of Vice? You want to be Carson Daly? <laughs> all right. 
We also have Neil Patrick Harris here, uh, star of, of Stages and Screens' uh, Downsizing, coming out 1222. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you got how much of the back end do you got? A lot. I got about 14% of the back end. Whoa, yeah. that is amazing. Wait, which whose back end? <laughs> Laura Derns? <laughs> Laura, yeah, 14%. Very good. We also, okay, and we need to get to our uh, next guest. He's a, we've been hyping it for what seems like an hour <laughs> here. Is, uh, I'm looking forward to this. This is exciting. He's a professional employee. Mm-hmm. Let's just get to him. Here he is, Rudy North. Hello, hey, Rudy. Hey, Scott. Scott, I want to get this out of the way right up top. Oh, okay. Yeah. I am a Postmates delivery driver. Oh, great. Okay. okay. Yeah. And I am a professional. I, I'm my own boss, and I'm also an employee of the Postmates company. So that's why I'm a professional employee. You understand? Wait, you said you you're your own boss. I am my own boss. I don't have, I don't report to anyone except my car. But but Postmates as well. You report I, to yeah, Postmates. Yeah, they kind of report to me when they want orders and stuff. But for me, the car is the boss. The car. Okay. <laughs> The car is the boss, sort of yeah. like sort of like uh, Neil's part in Fast and Furious. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. I've only I, seen Neil in, in Undercover Brother, but I guess you were also Fast and Furious. Solid. That's my favorite part. <laughs> when Neil comes, he comes out of a truck and he's high. He's weed. He's weed high, and he comes out and he says, "Solid." Oh, I, that's my favorite movie of all time. That hey. really? That, I didn't Thanks. know if you were going to ask me that, but that's my favorite movie. I in turn time. love Postmates. You do? I, yeah, I write notes on them and stick them on all kinds of stuff. Well, on well Neil, that's magazines. not what I'm talking I have, about. Yeah, I have something else to talk to you about I when I when we that? have that CISO conversation. Yeah? What's I'm going to tell you else, something else about Postmates. Oh, yeah, okay. there's something else going on that you don't know. Okay. I'm going to explain it because the flyover states may not know, Scott. Okay. Um, Postmates is a service here in California in a lot of metropolitan cities where dirt bags drive around in their cars <laughs> and receive orders from restaurants and then we pick them up and we deliver them to you. Oh. Dirt, dirt bags. Yeah. yeah. Professional mostly, dirt bags. Well, not, I'm, I'm not, I'm a professional post based delivery driver. I also happen to be a born and raised dirt bag. And so, it, but it is a company. So if, Imagine you want to order food from a Chili's. They don't deliver, right? They don't have their delivery. That's one of drivers. life's greatest regrets. Is Chili's does not deliver. You, why, Tell me about it. Uh, why can't Until you the very end of the meal, and then it delivers yeah. then they the deliver. toilet. Exactly. <laughs> great, great. Oh, they stuff. deliver it to the toilet? By the way, okay. they're a sponsor. <laughs> it's yeah. nice to have we, them. we can't talk too bad about Chili's, because a lot of my pickups are at Chili's, and I got a very good personal relationship with the managers and stuff over there. But Around the corner where the fudge gets made. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Chili's is where the fudge gets made. <laughs> food first. That fudge later. <laughs> it's surprising but, that there are fudge stores in the world. It is, right? Why you know? would there be a fudge store? Because we all make fudge. Oh. Now, Scott. <laughs> now, Scott, I want to talk to you about. Bag. I am a dirt bag. He is a dirt bag. I am a dirt oh, bag. Yeah, and, and, born and, and raised. Lines. I am born and raised a dirt bag. Now, the reason I, I'm here to speak to you about the Postmates company is Yes, sir. We employ so many dirt bags <laughs> that would otherwise be driving around not picking up food from restaurants. Yeah, okay. Do you I know guess, what I mean? Yeah, we'd I we'd be parked in front of your house listening to music very loud. Or right. we would be cutting people off and not using our signal. Right. But now or we... like jumping on a trampoline next jump, door exactly. with a really loud boom box. Mm-hmm, You're mm-hmm. like, keep it down. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to keep it down because me and... And we're dirtbags, Scott. Right. We're dirt, I was born in Miami, Florida. So oh, okay. Say no more. Dirtbag city. Do you know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. what we all call it. DBC. DBC. <laughs> DBC. Yep. MPH knows DBC now. <laughs> now... You know me? You know me? <laughs> Of course. <laughs> exactly. So I, to, to, to leave Miami and, and come to a place like Los Angeles and be able to be employed, Postmates has done me such a favor. Now, Neil, You came out here just to work for oh Postmates? Yeah. I okay. came out here three or four months ago mm-hmm. just to work for the Postmates Corporation. Did Postmates have, a, have an ad out saying, hey, do you want to live in Los Angeles or something? Yes. Yeah. It was a Craigslist post that I saw <laughs> that I, I, I answered, and at first it was a scam. And it wasn't Postmates. At first, it was a scam. <laughs> at first, it was a scam. You were it, petrified. I was. Pe- at first, it was a scam. I was petrified. <laughs> <But it's> t- <laughs> right. You know, I couldn't believe it. And, you know, so basically, but wait, the song it, continues. Did it, <laughs> did it turn into not a scam on the same call? <laughs> yeah. Or? No, that's just how I learned about Postmates. <laughs> oh, I see. So the first one was a scam. The and first one was a okay. scam. I was petrified. <laughs> and then... I learned about Postmates and decided on my own to purchase a ticket to Los Angeles. Oh, my gosh. Where'd you get this ticket? Now, that's a whole story in itself, Scott. And I can't go into the dirtbag things I did to get this ticket. 
I did some bad. That's for stuff. another episode. That's for another episode. I'm glad I'll be back for another episode. Scott. I'll, I'll be the judge of that. Just <laughs> continue. Okay, now, we'll talk about that next ten episodes from now. Okay. Now, I got here and and I needed a car, Scott. Mm. So you did not own one. I did not own a car, mm. so I needed a car. Mm-hmm. So what I did was, I was walking down Sunset. Okay, that's and a good start. That's a good start. As one does. And I could see that there was were, it time to feel good. I was walking down Sunset. It was time to feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and I continued walking down Sunset, and I saw a lot of cars passing, and I thought that was an opportunity. Okay. So I, so I jumped into traffic. Oh. oh. I jumped into traffic and was hit by a Toyota Tercel. Oh, hit. I was hit by a Toyota. I, I really kind of jumped on the car. Okay. Made it look like I was hit. Going how fast? Oh, he was going a clean 60 up Sunset. 60? Yeah, he was speeding. <laughs> what time of day was this? <laughs> it was rush hour. It was this rush guy, hour? Yeah. This, this, okay, this guy deserves it yeah, then. <laughs> that's what I was thinking too. He was driving on the sidewalk. Turns out what? he was a Postmates driver too. Oh. A complete dirtbag. Okay. But I, I dirtbagged him out of his car. So I said... You hit me with your car. Let's not have insurance handle this. Give me the keys. Just give, the me the keys. Keys. give me the keys. <laughs> this is like real Fast and the Furious style. That's exactly. Where it's like, I was like, give me the, give me the slips. The keys. I want pink slips. Right. Wow. And How I, hurt were you? Can I, you get hit I by a car. Very, I was very hurt. Neil was a good. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I was pretty fucked up. So I, I got into his car. And basically, <laughs> because my leg was broken, I pretty much drove around for the next three or four weeks. But wait, because... <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't get the logic of this. Yeah, I, could you not move you know? your leg to yeah, the break? Well, first of all, I didn't have a place to stay. So, okay. I, and I also, once I was in the car, it was very difficult to get out of the car. Okay. You know, so that was that was hard I for see. me. So the so the not the operating the the machinery of the car was okay. That just was easy. I just used my left leg. Okay, but getting out was difficult. That was very hard. So okay. what I did was I took over this man's order. I delivered his postman. Oh, so he was mid order. He was mid order. I took it. his order. I usurped his job. Okay, pretty much using his identity. So wait, this is like a life swap. <laughs> yeah, I life wow. swapped with him pretty much. Wow. So when you get hit by a car, you can just life swap with someone. Hey, if you got the dirtbag skills I do, Scott, you could do whatever you want. God, I want to go around trying to hit you with a car, <laughs> or no, getting hit by you. Wait, I don't want to hit yeah, you. You better be careful. You don't want Scott. my life. <laughs> you don't want that. Can I ask a question? <laughs> of course, Neil. Do you know what happened to this guy now? Oh, Neil, I did find out. I did find out what happened. To him. What is he? Is, he, is, is everything's he okay? okay for him? Oh yeah, he, he was fine. He is was he fine. back in Miami? No, he's no longer working at the Postmates Corporation. Oh, he's working for Lyft. <laughs> well, you said that like, like it was so dramatic. He just oh, he's working. <laughs> For Lyft. Now he got another car. I was about to say, yeah, don't you did. need a car for he went Lyft? Right down to the, he went right down to Honda. Why did you say it like it was this <laughs> well, wait a minute. horrible you guys, thing that happened to him? You guys know that working for these these passenger company, the, the, the right passenger share? delivery companies. Wait, you call it a passenger I call them passenger delivery, delivery instead companies. Instead of food delivery. It's not food delivery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know me. Now, <laughs> it's those companies are terrible because I'll tell you why, Scott. Okay. You don't get to leave your car. I see. Oh, that's true. Okay, so mm-hmm. when you're in Postmates, I've never really thought about yeah, this. Yeah, when Postmates, I, I pull up to the pull up to the restaurant, double park, of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Throw on my hazards, of course, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I put on my hazards and I run in. Right. Get so your let's hazies on. my hazies on. Let's say I'm going to Sugarfish. Right. Sure. Mm. Throw my hazies on. I run into Sugarfish. I grab the sushi. I don't. Need, I, I'm grabbing it so fast. Quite honestly. The sushi sloshed around in the bag by the time it gets to the house. Oh, it <laughs> so, sucks yeah. when it's sugar it's not fish. Good. Oh, in the yeah. It's not Special good. Containers. It's not good. No, I know. I'm not good at that. But what I do is I get to be out of the car. I get to communicate with people in the restaurant. And then how? What are you? What are you saying to these people in the restaurant? You're, you're doing it so fast. Oh yeah, like, I'm doing. I'm saying stuff like, "What's up? What's up, Charles? Um, how y'all doing? <laughs> okay. How y'all doing in the back? That kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> A lot of greetings. A lot of crowd work? Yeah. Cra- <laughs> Interesting. I, mean, I say like a lot of people here tonight. A lot of people, wow, what a crowd. I say stuff like that. Okay. To the, to the kitchen crew? To the kitchen crew. I say, any of y'all from out of town? And they, a lot of them are from out of town. <laughs> Anybody celebrating anything tonight? Anybody celebrating a lot of anniversaries in Sugarfish Kitchen. And, and because- Kitchen? Mm-hmm. But, I thought this was to people eating. Oh, no, oh, it's no, the no, people no. in the back. Okay, I, I don't interact with the people in the back. I'm a man of the people, Scott. Okay, got nice. it. You know, you, you saw me come in. I said hi to Brett. I shook his hand. I said, hey, Brett, how'd you do, Brett? I talk, I'm a man of the people. I, I, I get that sense about okay, you. Okay, so yes. I talk to the people in the back, and then guess what, Scott? Now I'm delivering your food. 
Right. I get to get back in my car. You're back in the car, much like a Lyft driver. Just, much like a Lyft driver. But, but I had that fresh air for a second, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and then, then once you get to the place. Oh, well, no, you, no, no. There's many steps before that. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't mean to before hurry that, this along. Of course, of course. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> before that, and of course Neil knows because you're a big fan. Before that, once I get the food, I like to give Neil a call. Neil doesn't even know what Postmates is 10 <laughs> yeah, minutes I, ago. Th- this is all new to me. Neil, wait, now hold on. Now you might not know this, Neil, but your assistants have ordered Postmates for you many times. Really? Whoa. You don't You don't remember me? I well, I remember the sugar fish. You don't, you remember the slosh around bag of sugar, sugar fish? Yeah, I actually do. I was kind of pissed off about that. Neil. I can't believe you don't remember me. That was we, you? We had a whole interaction now. Neil does like, what the fuck is up with my sugar fish? And we did fist fight for a few minutes. Fist fight? That. There I was a fist fight. This, he actually. said, what's up with my sugar fish? And I said, fuck you. And I just threw a punch. <laughs> Wait, you threw <laughs> first. He yeah. hit me in the throat. Yeah, I went right for the throat. Oh my God. And Why the throat first? It's called a dirt bag's handshake. <laughs> 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 okay, that makes Dirt sense. Bags, you just you chop to the throat or punch to the throat. Got it. I, I really flew off the handle very quickly, but then you know what? I said I'm sorry, mm. and and I you said, asked if you could use the bathroom. I said, "Can I use your bathroom?" <laughs> and then you just <laughs> and then you said, "Of course, <laughs> of course." Well, and I then just said, "Of course." <laughs> <laughs> it right. was a weird voice, but I, yeah. I took it. I took it as politeness. I, I know you play a lot of characters. I was bleeding from the throat. Well, yeah. Right. Oh, oh, right. I forgot. Did and I? And then did. just chilies coming out into his bathroom. And then yeah, I made the fudge <laughs> in your bathroom for a few minutes. I'm surprised you don't remember me, Neil. I, I respect. Now, well, Neil, I did want to talk to you about this because I did check my rating afterwards. Yeah. And I did get four out of five stars. Four? That, that, that's That seems appropriate. Generous. Ah. That doesn't even seem appropriate to me. That Neil. seems like you're Neil. being— I don't want to give—well, listen, if you give, if you give two or three stars, there's a problem. You know what I mean? It sounds to me like there's a problem. Uh, I, got punched, I got punched in the throat. You Neil, know, I, Neil I, you must have such an interesting life that stuff like this happens to you so often that you don't remember it. Have you ordered sugar fish before? Uh, yes, of course. And have you ever had a problem when they came and? I have, but I I haven't been punched in the throat regarding. Wow, you don't remember wow. me either. Well, I think I think you may have the crazy. <laughs> Wait a minute, you delivered to me you, as well. Co- wow, I can't believe. <clears throat> Yes, of course, Scott. I have delivered to you. It, I, was, it wasn't Sugarfish. I remember the food. Usually, I don't remember. the It was Mendocino delivery. Farms. Oh, Mendocino Farms. Yeah, I get that salad. You, don't, with you the, get the salad. The grilled with the chicken. Grilled yeah. chicken, right? Uh huh. And you had a problem that there was no grilled chicken in your salad. Well, it's the grilled chicken salad. Of and course, I, I have a problem. I told you, Scott. Someone cut me off on the street, and I took the little strips of grilled chicken out, and I was throwing it into their car through the window. <laughs> And and you needed to understand that that's part of the delivery process. I'm defending your orders. And what did I do? I don't really recall. Well, you turned around. I punched you in the butt. <laughs> you punched me in the butt, right? You don't remember this? <laughs> you don't remember? I hit you right in the glute. That seems weirder than a throat punch, I Scott. Guess, I guess you're. And you're so know. tall. I did go for the. I did go for the throat. You're going for the throat how punch. How tall yeah. you were? <laughs> yeah. Neil was standing in a, in a trench when I punched her, but you were not. Yeah. So I, I I went for the neck. Right in the butt. Yeah. I can't believe you don't remember that, Scott. I, unless it's the actual butthole. I don't, you know. No, you don't These remember. things kind of right, like are right, hazy. Right. Yeah. Do you remember what, what Scott's rating was for you? <laughs> yeah. Scott gave me four and a half out of five stars. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I do want to say I'm not happy about these ratings. Wait, who's you don't know, like four and a half? I'm who's a perfectionist. Who's the kettle now? Look, like, much like Big Chunky Bubbles over question. here. Good <laughs> question. Much like Big, Big Chunky Bubbles. I'm a perfectionist. Right. <laughs> you I know never, what I, mean? I don't really think that's something true you can say about Big Chunky what? Bubbles. <laughs> How dare you? You ain't seen this you ain't seen the soup bubble, Scott? You've seen my act? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen I've driven past your Have act you delivered a lot. soup to him? Oh yeah, I did wanna I, I yes. Do you not remember that big chunky? I do remember. Of course it. he does, because he is a gentleman. I gave you five stars. You gave me five stars, and I did. Give you a little bit of a titty twister. That's right. But Wait for at, it. At my request. Yeah, he asked. I, I, I came by and- I was falling asleep. Yeah. I had some Jones on third and I said, Big Chumpy B, Big Chumpy B, I got you some soap. I got you some soup and some soap from Jones on third. He wasn't sure if I said soap it's, bubbles or soup, soup bubbles. So I got right. both because I'm a perfectionist. The Jones on third soap is really great. It's so good. It's, it's good yeah. soap. Yeah. And then, and then he said, wow, thank you so much. Can you deliver me a titty twister right now? And I did How it. polite? Why are you po- more polite to him than you are to me? When he's in the show? service industry, I'm sort of performing what? a service here. Really? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, Scott. To be honest, I don't know if you could handle a little job like Postmates. I don't. I don't know that I want one. I mean, it seems to it's be not about a- want, Scott. I'm saying I don't know if you could handle it. Wait, wait, okay. What are the requirements here? All right. First of all, you gotta have a car. 
I okay. I do have one of those. So is that it? I mean, well, maybe you can handle it. <laughs> okay, that's all. <laughs> That's his one, one even, requirement? I didn't even think about it because, yeah, yeah, you know what? You could probably handle this, guy. Okay. You have a car. I have a, I have a question. Yes, Neil. Of course, Neil. Does, uh, do you get assy? Like yeah. assy during the day if you're mm, in your car mm. so much? Now like, explain assy because <laughs> I could interpret that a few ways. Do I start to smell like ass? I look smell or just are you unclean? Is it because, soupy down there? Is it there? soupy yeah. downstairs? It seems like LA is a pretty yeah. warm Is this the service you provide? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to bring <laughs> up soup great question. to big chunky bubbles. <laughs> well, that is a great question because my Keep air- soup out your mouth. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> big chunky bubbles. Are you from Miami? Because <laughs> sometimes shit. you're like you pop off in a way that is familiar to me. But Neil, great question. Now, when I did hit my own car in obtaining the life swap from this man. I did hit Mr. the lift. I did hit the compressor of the air conditioner, and I do not have air conditioning in the car. Ooh, no! But, but that actually helps. It keeps the food warm. The heat of the car keeps the food warm, so I keep it about ninety-five to one hundred and three in there. Ooh, the boy. reason I asked the question is because have you noticed kind of this uh, the sort of Postmates stench it's on a the little, food? Yeah. You mean like fresh salads, fresh food? No, it's no, fresh no, off the grill. No, it's not. not it's it ain't like, fresh. It's, it's, not, it's like a, a certain sushi car. Smell. Yeah, it's oh, a, okay. it's like sushi mixed with mm. asshole. Yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, taint like a tainty, yeah, like a tainty, tainty smell. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's probably me. Yeah, well, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's because yeah, because I'm sweating in my car a lot, and um, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, I, uh, yeah. So, so I guess what you're trying to say is that I'm not only a dirt bag, but I'm dirty. You're a dirty bag. Dirty bag. <laughs> mm, mm, dirty bag. <laughs> it's a parody of the NSYNC <laughs> Dirty Pop song. You know what? Well, compared with that parody, that I kind around. of feel like I like that as a nickname. <laughs> I want people to call me Dirty Bag Rudy North. That's not bad. Rudy North, by the way. <laughs> yes, yeah, <so> that's my <laughs> name. <laughs> Rudy North. Yeah, and I have this nice jo- I have this cool joke where yeah. in my car I have a compass that is always pointing to north and that's always pointing to me. And wait, it's always pointing at <laughs> yep. the, it's pointing at the driver. At the driver's so seat? it's confusing. Sometimes I th- I forget it's doing that and I do yeah. try to follow the compass. Do you get lost? Yeah, sometimes? I drive in a lot of circles. Food gets very late. Yeah, boy. And the later it gets, the hotter the car is, you know. Mm-hmm. Of course, of course. Well, uh, uh, I have to say, uh, Rudy, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I knew your name. I didn't have to look down at my notes. <laughs> it seemed as though <laughs> it's such a forgot- nondescript name, Rudy North, <laughs> it did, it for seemed- such an interesting person. Well, that's yeah. what I did want to talk about that because the the the. This whole interesting as person thing, that was a lot of pressure, Scott. That's a, I'm sorry. I don't mean to put that do on you. I, I mean, that's I, more of a Neil thing. Yeah, I don't know if I I'm find that one of the most interesting as to people. I really? don't know if I'm that interesting. I mean, yes, I'm a mortal. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait. But, Hold uh, on. Can you be yeah. clearer in the way you said that? <laughs> immortal? <laughs> You're immortal or a mortal? I, I don't know if we have time for that. I mean, we do. We, we I might have to do. talk on another podcast about that. Maybe yeah, we're, right, we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah, this is, the beard. <laughs> this is like, when you bring this up? That's when yeah. you drop that bomb? I, mean, I wanted to talk about post space. <laughs> You're burying the lead with it. Uh, can, can you just tell us how you got to very, very... Oh, all right. Just well, in 20 seconds, how, how did you get to be immortal? All right, in 16 hundred what <laughs> I, I don't know if i could get into it well okay well, like, you're well, telling me if i were to stab you right now you wouldn't die nah, yeah, do, the what kind of you, immortality do you have yeah, do you have you where to, you cannot be harmed or where you, you just live a yeah, long time that's a great question so if you tried to stab me the, the knife would just sort of suck into my body and be incorporated into my being I, I gotta try this do you have a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have a knife in your kit of course i do oh, wow you know. that's a yeah all right hold on. go ahead neil <laughs> Okay, oh. there we go, and then watch it. Oh, oh my! All right, whoa, oh. gross! Yeah, that was why I was so confident jumping into traffic because I knew I wasn't gonna die. Yeah, well, how, why, why was your leg broken for? Oh yeah, I do get five injured. Weeks. <laughs> You should work I'm as a, a magician. magician. So it, yeah, yeah. So it has to be a kill wound <laughs> yeah. in order for you to. <laughs> oh, no. I'm bleeding from this knife wound for sure. Okay. And, uh, but it sucked the knife in. I'm going to bleed a little bit. It'll a heal. Little, but yeah. okay. Sorry about that. I got caught up in the moment. Yeah, no, it's all right. Hey, Neil, I'm just, I'm happy to meet you. I don't feel like I'm that interesting. But, please like... come back and talk about this because oh. this is something that I want to talk all about. Right. We, we yeah. are running yeah. out of time. All right. Right. Maybe, maybe next time I'll talk about how. What happened to me in Miami? Then the next time I'll talk about how. <laughs> We're going to cut right to the compact you made with whatever wizard or. Oh, it wasn't a compact. No, no, okay, no. It was right. a sacrifice. But we could just okay, get to that. Okay, okay. Well, wow. Now, now we gotta, you go to plugs? Yeah, sorry. We got to go to plugs. It, it is uh, our favorite feature, a little something called plugs. <laughs> Oh, little sky, now ask your guests, what's the thing they 
want to look next Tell us what to watch and tell us where to go Anything you got, I really want to know Just two more verses. <laughs> it's the wrong day to have such a long one. You can always tell with the wind-up. They really go for it. Succinct. Wow. That was Fill Me With Your Plugs by Cardon and the Limits. Hey, Britt, play there, that no, one more time. There were, there were limits. There were there, definitely yeah. needed to be some oh limits. Oh, my gosh. Neil, as, as a musical theater actor, what do you think of the... Uh, of I think that? I found my new 16 bars. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's plug it up. Neil, obviously you're here. You, you, we talked a little bit before, but Downsizing comes out uh, a week from Friday Indeed. in theaters everywhere. Then This is everywhere, right? This it is, is everywhere, and yeah. it's, it's it's doing quite well. It's it's They've named it as one of the top ten movies of the year, and it's like it who, opened up who festivals. Who did this thing? Who did this? <laughs> Who did that? Who did that? Who did that? Papers of news. Oh, papers of record? <laughs> yes, they've announced things like that. Oh, my that. gosh. No, I'm thrilled to be a part of that. And the Magic Misfits book is out and about a great holiday gift for your childrens. That's right. Um, you know, why, why, why not read on Christmas Day? For sure. You know? I, I mean, uh, kids, you know, usually they want to see toys or something, but if they open it up and see a book, they're going to be all right. If the stocking's big enough. Oh, that's right. It how, would take up a lot of real estate. How big are, how big are the stockings at your house? hey yo, Hey. <laughs> hey <-o>. tiger. <laughs> I guess that I was some sort of like innuendo. <laughs> I guess. I was hoping. Uh, big chunk is, uh, is that, uh, this is. Well, I guess I'm done. No. <laughs> nope. Of course. I, I, I guess I don't get to go either. At in and of itself .com, yeah, You managed to insult show. both of us just now. <laughs> <laughs> Neil's puppet dreams on CISO. Look forward to that. <laughs> really, let's have a two-minute conversation after you leave. Yeah, okay. Uh, Big Chunky Bubbles, what do you got here? Well, I got my first bubble special coming out on CISO. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, shit. What? <laughs> we in trouble. <laughs> I'm love CISO's content this season is strong. It is. They bought a lot of stuff, I'll say. Bubble shows, puppet shows. <laughs> I can't understand why they're not more popular. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lean Christmas for me this year. <laughs> uh, what else, Big Chunk? That's it. Go to the next guy. All right. Uh, Rudy North. Uh, I'm not, I'm not that, I don't have that much to plug because, of course, I'm just a Postmates driver. Uh, I do watch TV on my phone while I'm driving. Sure. And I do like to watch a show on Go90 called Mr. Student Body President. It's kind of like House of Cards without Kevin Spacey already. So oh, okay. Enjoy oh. that. So it's pre-Spacey. It's, pre it's so good. Okay, wow. Um And... Um, you know what? Wait. You know what? I am doing a press conference next week. I did make a discovery in Egypt. I, I discovered an ancient tomb. <laughs> God damn it! Why didn't you talk we about should, this before your press conference? It next just week. popped into my head because so I was thinking about. I thought about House of Cards and then Tomb and then Wait, House of Cards to Tomb? <laughs> I don't get the connection there. Well, all right, we'll explain that connection maybe in four maybe or five in, episodes right. from now. You are one of the most interesting of people. Am I? People. And you refuse to talk about anything interesting well, on this show. I want to get into the intricacies of Postmates. I feel like we got a whole other episode of that, right, but we'll, we'll get to that one. playing. Uh, I want to plug, well, uh, you know what? Uh, next week is our big uh, Christmas episode, and then uh, after that we have our best of episodes. We always do that every year with comedian Paul F. Tompkins and I sit around breaking down the best of remember get your votes in now uh, that'll be in a couple of weeks all yeah, right but that sucks no but that sucks what's uh, what's because the that? deadline has already passed no but you're in I'm uh, not in, I'm in for next for year. next year seriously will people remember this episode history shall decide I think they will with all these postmates revelations <laughs> <laughs> close with the old plug bag close it up talk about bags and bags I'm talking about All right, guys. I want to thank our guests, uh, Neil. So great of you to make time to drop by. I know thank you're in the middle of a big uh, press tour, so I really appreciate you making time. Anytime you want me. This so is one of the best shows I've ever heard. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Rudy. <laughs> I definitely didn't have to look down at my notes again. <laughs> my name is so memorable. <laughs> it's it's so that's one of the most interesting parts about me. I, no, I, I it's almost not. I almost it's never Ru talk about my tail because Rudy of my name. Short for something? Oh, um, rudimentary? No, it's just Rudy. Rudith. It's Rudy with an I, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I almost never talk about my tail because of my name. So. Uh, Wait, yeah. you have a tail? <laughs> Oh, we oh my bad. We can't get into that. Scott. We, That's too crazy. We can't are you like a it. mythological figure or no. something? 
<sighs> All right, Neil, I know you got some, you got places to be, but we could get into it, Scott. I, yeah. Uh, it's 1600. Okay, no, okay, we don't okay, have right, time. Right, Big Chunky right. Bubbles. Um... <laughs> yeah, I don't like you. You don't like me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see you next time. All right, everyone. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for listening. Remember, cash is easy to lose and checks, they take a while to clear. Thankfully, there's Zelle, a new way to send money to your friends and family from your banking app. Once you're enrolled, the money moves right between almost any U.S. bank accounts. It typically arrives in minutes. Plus, it's backed by major banks, which means you can send money confidently. Just go to zellpay.com, Z-E-L-L-E pay.com to learn more. Zell, this is how money moves. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive produced by Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Colin Anderson. For more information and content, visit earwolf.com. Earwolf.